Hello, I can't. everybody. We didn't. We I I didn't show Leggy the picture that I was using for comms, so I took her by surprise. Hello, <laughs> everyone, and welcome to the round four of the Pokemon Let's Go Any Percent tournament. Uh, I'm Phoenix, and that picture there is my lovely cat having a moment earlier today. And I'm joined by Leggy on commentary today. How you doing, Leggy? I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm really excited for this race. It's going to be one of our two-person races rather than the traditional three between Iron Dre and King Trubs. What are you thinking about this one tonight? Well, I think there's two ways this could go. Either you can go for the fastest time that you've ever placed before, so you can try and get two points and, make, and squeak your way in the next round, or you can meme it up. And you know what? We might just see both of those happen today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and both I'm of these. Looking forward to it. Both of these runners are strong, but they are right down there at the bottom uh, of the mathematically not eliminated. So the way that the two-player races work is that first place either gets three points or two points, depending on whether or not. They are above or below the median. Second place gets one or zero. So this could get spicy if one of our runners really pops off. Yes, it could. I'm excited to see what happens. It looks like we are just getting underway, if this timer is correct. Uh, yeah, about five seconds. Awesome. And it looks like we've got both Pikachu and Eevee today. So it looks like uh, Leggies and my knowledge will both be useful. By our powers combined, we will do a decent job at commentary. Yes, we will. All right, we got a we got a girl Pika and a boy Eevee. Well, that's unfortunate, but here we are. It's representation, you know. They can't all be girl starters. That's true. We can only have so many girls on stream. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, the answer is three today, uh, unless <laughs> Iron or Trubs pick girl three or something. Who knows? Who knows? I think they can hear me. Who knows? <laughs> That's what I like to see. Good. Both girl threes. Let's that means we're go. both, we're both going to be likely to finish this race. Excellent. All right. Now we're just going to get through and set our options, and then we're going to play a Pokemon speed run. Uh, it's a Pokemon speed run. So there's going to be a lot of picking out the Pokemon that we want to beat the game with, and then we'll be going through it. We'll be beating gyms. We'll be beating the Elite Four. And actually, in this run, we're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with Pokemon Let's Go as a game, each gym has a requirement that you need to complete in order to get into the gym, fight the gym leader, get the badge, you know, the usual Pokemon stuff. In this game, some of those requirements are trivial. Show the girl in front of Erica's gym a cute Pokemon. Spoiler alert, every Pokemon is cute. Yes, especially your favorite. Yes, that one, what? especially. But there is one gym where it's a little spicy. In order to get into Koga's gym, we have to have 50 Pokemon caught in our Pokedex. Luckily for us, this means evolutions count. Unluckily for us, we can't just catch chain 50 Caterpies together. Man, wouldn't that run be so different if we could, though? Right? So different. But no, unfortunately, we're going to have to catch a bunch of Pokemon. And that's the, the fun and the curse of this game. Um, whether or not Pokemon cooperate is a big part of what makes a run good or bad, and what uh, what you do to do to catch the Pokemon will also be important because you need experience as you go through. Uh, and one of the best parts of this game, depending on who you ask, is that we're going to be making use of the Joy-Con's motion control features. Turns out that when you dual wield Joy-Cons, you actually get more experience than if you were going to just use it in handheld mode or only using one Joy-Con. Yep, and especially early on in this game. Catching Pokemon is going to be our primary source of experience. Yes, we'll still have trainer fights, and those are going to give us some experience, but early on, it will pale in comparison to our catch XP. So our runners are going to be trying to maximize the amount of experience they get from the various catches they run into as they go. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, it's it's Iron and King Drebs running today, so I hope you weren't counting on us pronouncing any Pokemon's names correctly. Uh, I think I'm we already said here. Pikachu correctly. Well, that was only when I was talking about the title of the game. I don't butcher Nintendo game titles. Right there, we've got a Bika, and we've got an Eevee. 
Uh, and we're going to be running through the game with both of these for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. Though the beak, the beak is going to need some help. Um, yeah. The EP technically will as well, uh, but not quite as much as the B. Yeah, EB gets a lot of really useful coverage moves as we go. Uh, Bika, unfortunately, is locked in by the constraints of type coverage, and so we'll be needing to catch, as previously mentioned, a couple of friends along the way. We'll point them out as we go. Uh, but first, yeah. we have to meet our rival for the second time. Funnily enough, his name is also One. Go figure. I thought it was Trace. Oh, depending on who you ask, yeah, I think... Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, what's the canon name of the girl? Is it Elaine? That sounds right, but that could also be, like, any of the, uh, female protagonists from Gen 7 onward. For real, I want to say it's Chase, uh, Trace, and Elaine. I am getting confirmation from our technical producer, Sandy Beach. Thank you for running tech. It is, in fact, Chase and Elaine. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I should move my chat window so I can see that too. Great, perfect. Okay, we got it, we got it. Uh, all right, um, so I wonder, I don't think either of our runners today are going to be checking their starters because that would imply that we're trying. So we're just gonna run through and uh, not worry about it. And if we get a bad nature, too bad. Yep, the good news though, is that for our starter Pokemon, the only variance in their starting stats is their nature. So, uh, we don't have to worry about, like, doing IV calculations or any of that nonsense. Now, nah, what you see is what you get. At level 5, you get... Uh, you can check your stats, know exactly what your nature is. When you level up to 6, you'll see your stats, and you'll be able to check that as well. Yeah, the only thing that's going to be different is every Pokémon will have a set of AVs. Every level up, it will get 1, and the cycle is repeated every 10 levels. Uh, and the AVs are dependent on the nature that will show up when you uh, use the summary menu. Um, it, I don't think it'll make... Well, it can make a lot of a difference, especially mm -hmm. if you get like six in one stat and like one in another or zero. Uh, so that'll make a bit of a difference. But in this race, we're just gonna hope it works. Hope it works. Yep. The good news is that based off of the efforts of a lot of very talented runners, both this year and last year, there are strats for running any starter you get. They might be a little scary, and they might say, oh god, oh god, please over-level like heck here. But there are strats. I've definitely, like, both done this and also, like, imagined people doing this, where, like, something will get crit or lose a lot of health very quickly, and then you just start screaming. That's the best part. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just start screaming regardless, so, you know... That's just oh, life just someday. randomly, just randomly mm -hmm. through through the video game. That's fair. Yeah. I tend to like do a primal scream during like the sea skim cutscene, just because mm. like it's so long. And what else are you gonna do? Yeah, like I know a lot of people like to split when you get sea skim. I can't stand sitting there and watching my timer tick up. <laughs> so I actually split before entering the city. Wonderful. But enough uh, about that. We've got our first fight of the run. Our uh, wonderful trainers today are facing off their rival, who has the opposite Pokemon. On the Beaker side, it is just Thundershock spam. On the Evoi side, it is just Tackle spam. Um, you can start to suss out a little bit about your nature here. Uh, for instance, over on Iron side, we might have. A decent special attack, but with a four shot, who can really say? Um, I don't have a good sense of how uh, Tr Trubs' starter is looking, but... Well, I can definitely tell you that Trubs, or Matt, as we like to call him, uh, is definitely not plus attack. Mm -hmm. uh, also saw that Trubs named the EB girl, uh, so every everyone is a girl here today. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, you'll love to see it. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the next town just to, you know, get there. Formalities. Uh, and then we're gonna try heading to the forest and do our first big catching section of the run. Uh, what we're really looking for in there is to get some early bugs. Um, you know, your your cater pies, your weeds, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're also going to want to get a grass type so we can get into Brock's gym. Uh, in the Bika version, we've got uh, an Odish and then we've got a bell sprout in uh, the EB version. Yeah, 
And one of the nice things uh, that really makes this run interesting is that both versions of the game are about as fast as each other. You see top runners running both versions, you see times that are within the same ballpark as each other. Um, but there are these little differences that uh, shake things up a little bit. For instance, on Ironside, we get the level 6 stat check right here. Uh, looks like Iron's that... attacking stats are good. I Is that minus don't... defense? I... I am too slow at reading stats to <laughs> have a good answer there. Where are you Pika runners in chat? Help us out. Yeah. Whereas on Matt's side, he's going to have to run all the way to the next trainer before... Uh, getting the level 6 stat check that'll tell him his name is starter's nature. Oh, chat doesn't know how to read. I mean, that makes sense. Um, Iron says that he is either mild or rash. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Trubs is going for the, the early weed. Um, so one of the nice things about Route 2 catches is, is that they're 100% guaranteed. So Trubs didn't even worry about getting a bonus to the catch there. Just threw a ball and it's basically guaranteed to get in. So that's really nice because it gets you one early bug, uh, but that means that you've got two C for every catch in the forest. Uh, so the, the downside is we're not going to know what um, what Matt's Eevee's feature is until we teach double kick, but what can you do? Yeah, like, I know uh, runners go back and forth on it, you know. I don't hate it, especially because it does give you the ability to see a frick early. Yeah, um, Because or, of the um... way that this works. If you have a Pokemon caught, it does do mechanics where rarer Pokemon are slightly easier to spawn. Oh, definitely not minus defense. See, I don't know. I don't know, P Pika. I just think that they're like EB. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I thought maybe it was minus defense, but that's fair. Uh, Rash, cool. And then uh, Matt going through the Caterpie fight. Uh, and we're going to be starting to look, be on the lookout for some Pokemans. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, it would be great to see a Frick if we do. Um, I think that's probably the only bonus that Bika can get at this point in time, right? Uh, yes. Uh, whereas Trubs is about to catch a Bika of his own. Oh, there you go. It's also a girl. Let's go. Uh, oh, and it's a, a nice level 6 one, too. That's pretty great. Not gonna oh, bother yeah. razzing because we've got 2C, so that's gonna be pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. Not something I've seen this tournament so far, but if you do have a, peak, a Bika as EB, you, you can use it on this fight against the Pidge. Um, that way you can get an, like get through it in one turn rather than sometimes EB, EB has to do it in two. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's slow, especially since the second slot and Matt's party's already taken up by the weed. So, you know, what can you do? Yep. Though, you know, the, the weed does come at a slightly lower level, so getting a little more experience on it now is definitely useful. Iron has picked up an item called a lure, which does two very important things. First of all, it makes Pokémon much more likely to spawn, much faster to spawn, so we are going to see a lot more spawns coming up, which is great for when you want to catch a lot of things. The second thing it does is... Normally, Pokemon in the wild spawn within a level range, depending on what screen you're on. So here it's like three to six or four to six, I forget which. But if you three. have the lure up, every single spawn you see after the lure goes up, it's they're all level seven. Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, and there's Iron's Aw Odish. We're gonna get that. Um, apparently, I go southern when I'm trying to speak weird, pe weird, weird Pokemon names. Uh, nice attack from the Odish there, a little bit slow, but what can you do? Um, yep. but that's okay. Iron's going for it. Already got most of what he needs. Uh, yeah. and Matt's just gonna be around in the corner to get the lore himself. Yep. Uh, some things to note about Iron's Odish catch, because now's a good time to talk about catch mechanics. Uh, first of all, the Odish was glowing red, which means it was supersized. Uh, super-sized Pokémon are either bigger or smaller than their usual counterpart, like, physically, but more importantly, they're worth more experience. Um, secondly, uh, getting the excellent throw, there's four stages of throws. There's complete... Hi, Buzz Drill. <laughs> that, that Buzz Drill just went right up into the sky. Their planet needs them. Mm-hmm. Um... But getting an excellent throw gives you more experience and also increases the odds that the Pokémon will stay caught. 
uh, below that yeah. is great, nice, and then if you don't see any words at all, it means you completely missed the circle, though, you know, you still can try and catch. Very good, yeah. Uh, and it looks like we're level 9 on the EB. Now, uh, one of the differences between Biga and EB, EB is that you really, really, really want your EB to be level 10 before you go fight Brock. That's because Brock has a bunch of ground type Pokemon. And, uh, you know, normal types aren't very good against ground and rock types. So we're going to try and learn Double Kick, which Eevee learns at level 10. Bika, he learns this move at level 9, but it doesn't fight against Brock because Oddish is so much better at it. So we need that move kind of kind of soon. Yeah, for the Bika side, uh, getting, getting the Oddish is really great because uh, the Sprout over on Trub's side, uh, Matt's side, is... A physical attacker, it knows Vine Whip, which is a physical grass type attack. So even though it's four times effective on Brock's Pokemon, uh, the Oddish Ooh. is so much better because it's special attacking. Oh, I forget the name of the nature, but that was plus it plus special attack minus special defense, which is oh. a pretty darn good nature for, for for Matt there. That's pretty good. Yeah, I do know that special defense it can be a little rough. Um, especially in some of the later fights. Uh, Rash. They're both Rash. Great. Okay. Um, so it can be. I would prefer minus special defense over minus defense any day. Mm -hmm. um, but it does make JJ2 and 3 pretty pretty rough for Matt. So hopefully he, may, he gets good experience. Yeah, everybody's really got a Rash tonight. They should probably get that checked out. Would, would you say that that might be a little irrational? Nah. You know, fair. Had to ask, though. Iron's getting themselves a Pidge, uh, which is nice to see. Just a little bit of extra experience on the early routes. Uh, I never hate doing that. Um, uh, yes, thank you. That joke was courtesy of Greta Ice Fiction. Vixen, I definitely did see that in chat, so there you go. Credit for your joke. Each bobber guy is not coming for you today. No, I, I like to credit my sources when I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, Iron, a little bit ahead of the foot race, uh, Trubs, uh, back, still in the forest on that last trader fight, but it's still early, and a lot of the gap we're seeing is coming from the differences in versions. Uh, Bika has a really easy time with a lot of these forest fights, especially the Pidge. Nice critical hit in that Motopode. Didn't, I don't think it even mattered, but that's nice. Well, early game sure is going nice and easy for our runners at the moment. I, uh, we, we got our grass types. We're just schmoovin'. Uh, Iron's yeah. a little bit ahead in the foot race, but I don't think Matt's gonna try and catch anything yet. No glowing rats, so off we go. Now we're caught up at seven, basically. Yep, yep. Um, both of our runners in a really good spot, both in terms of catches and experience going into the Brock fight. Yeah, I think I saw that Iron's Bika was already level 11, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So you have a little yeah. bit more of a cushion going into Mount Moon. Yeah, and the reason we're talking about that Mount Moon cushion is because, as mentioned, each gym has a requirement. Brock's is to show off a grass or water type if you could get one traded over, I guess. Um, Maybe you've got friends, which is a novel concept, but here we yeah, are. What's a friend? I mean, um, I've but, got those, but whatever. You know, fair. Uh, but Misty's requirement is to have a Pokémon at level 15, and we want that to be our starter, especially because we want to use our starter in battle there. So, uh, higher levels are always nice for avoiding ranges or reducing the number of hits to KO, but we do have that hard constraint of needing level 15 for Misty. Yep, uh, and it, it helps with with all the fights as well. There is a backup if you don't hit level 15, but it's slow, and as speedrunners, we like to try and hit that range regardless. Mm -hmm. So, off we go in the first fight. We got a, a Geode Ood. Um, very, very neat Pokemon. It's just a ball of hands that floats. Um, I don't know, Leggy, if you've seen the, the Tokyo... I forget which region in Japan it is, but the Prefecture mascot for Geodude. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Amazing. Um, Odish one-shotting the Unix. Uh, my we preferred love to see operating good system. One shot. Yeah. Oh, it's Unix. I see. Yes. Sorry, I mispronounced that one. Didn't mean to. No worries. 
No, the Unix. We said that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the year of Unix uh, on the desktop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Attica, you missed earlier where we said we were going to pronounce mispronounce as many Pokemon as possible. So sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, great. Now we get to go do our shopping, uh, and I believe that the Bika version actually buys um, an X item that won't come into play for another like two hours. It's a special surprise that'll help us later. Yay! I love future planning. I mean, the other nice thing about picking picking it up is that it lets us set up the menu. I do know that Evie gets a burn heal here. I believe so, yeah, because we can get that terrible burn on um, on the Misty fight. Mm hmm Whereas uh, Bika, in a perfect world, just one-shots and doesn't worry about it. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Is it a range level 15? Uh, depends on how much go power you have in your attack stat. Oh, the AVs matter, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you confused at home, go power and AVs are two terms for the same thing, so the random plus ones you get on to the end of your level ups. Yeah, it turns out this year's tourney isn't about Pika versus EV, it's about AVs versus go power, but honestly, whatever, I'm just gonna call it AVs and pretend like nothing happened. I'm, I'm Team Chaos, I just... You just, you just waffle. wiffle waffle? Yeah, I wiffle waffle or specifically refer use the the term that my co-commentator isn't using. Oh, I gotcha, okay. Yeah. Um Iron coming down route three, looking for Ooh. Oh, Sandrew. We'd love to see a good Sandrew. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ika gets two bonus Pokemon. They get the Sandrew and they get the monkey. Um, mm -hmm. Matt's only going to be able to see a snake if he if he's lucky. Um, all are good just for padding out your catch count. It's not really um, something that you look for more experience on. It's nice if you get like a big one, but it's not going to get you any like significant amount of experience. Like that was not well. Okay, it got him. It got him the buzz drill, but that's about it. Yeah, and like you know, every point of experience counts, but you aren't like one of the big strat uh, things to learn as you know my time's been getting better and better, is which Pokemon do you really want to try and go for the first try, excellent throw to maximize the experience, and which ones are like, no, just get in the ball, you're coming with me, you're a plus one towards getting Koga. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... And these ones are, are definitely ones that you're never looking for a lot of experience on. You just wanted to get in the ball. Yep. And now we're picking up um, the the scammiest Pokemon in the game, ac yeah, according Magikrap. to the game. Yeah, Magikrap. It, according to the game, that's the scammiest Pokemon. I don't I don't think that, but you know what? I'm not gonna. I I can't tell the game what to do. Yeah, like as a kid, I always bought it, and you know, trained it up immediately to get Gary Area this. Oh, Gary Area. Yeah. yeah. There was a nothing that spawned um, that was on Matt's screen when when, they, when he entered Mount Moon, but uh, it's gone now, so that's fun. Oh, look, glowing bat, that's super useful. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, the way this game works is that, like, half the time when you interact with things in this game, it just de decides to despawn all the Pokémon. Um, in particular, every single time you talk to one of the Team Rocket members in Mount Moon, they just despawn all of the Pokemon on the screen. It's kind of amusing, honestly. I think, I think, uh, what was it, round two, where that happened to a shiny Zub that spawned in this cave? God. It's a good shade of green. True. But, like, aren't half the shinies from Generation 1? Yeah. No, well, say, I say good shade of green. There are a lot of bad shades of green in Gen 1 shinies. Also fair. Um, and here we'll we'll notice a bit more version difference. Uh, Matt is back to using his starter, while Iron is sticking with the Udish to get through a grass type that Bika can't handle, and then a second trainer after this who will have uh, Andrew yet again. We love a good Sandrew, even even mm -hmm. though Bika is not super well prepared to handle them. They're cute. Uh, sure. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, now Matt, Matt's going downstairs, and we're looking for um, the, the Geode Ood, 
And then we'll also want a blob and a mushroom. Uh, hopefully the blob is pink and big or small, mm -hmm. but you know, it has to be glowing either way. Yeah. Like, uh, one of the other interesting version differences between these two, uh, games is that, wait, did Matt forget to lure? I don't think so. I think he's just getting really unlucky spawns. Nope. No, uh, he did he forget to lure. lure. Oh, he did lure. Level 11. You're right. You're yes. right. <laughs> I missed it in the menu. And also, uh, uh, EP lures way earlier than Bika does. Yes. Uh, because Bika waits until after you fought the two traitors, whereas EP uh, does it earlier because you want to teach Headbutt, because that's just a really good move for the stage of the game, uh, especially with the stab bonus that EP gets on it. Yeah, I don't think that was a super dude, but that was a pretty big dude. Uh, gave a lot of experience to the man's team mm -hmm. there. Yep. And we see Iron doing a quick deposit of all the Pokemon that no longer need to evolve, do not want to get experience points on them because that every single time a Pokemon levels up, that's like two seconds. Good thing that Patass has spawned there. Um, otherwise I would have said, man, Matt needs to respawn this room. Mm-hmm. Great. And now Iron is down here, so let's see what spawns Iron gets. Yeah. We'll see we'll we'll see if Iron gets a Paras as well. But yeah. Moonspawn's uh, looking oh. slow today, but there's PP. <laughs> there there's a PP. Um or the um the base clef. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's it for iron there's some there's some zoobs and some geodes but that's about it nice excellent throw for a very high experience catch from iron um as long as our little pink friend stays in the ball this is gonna be good yeah that would be preferred there it is and iron's beaker is in a very good spot uh, yeah. Level 13. Look, still looking for a bit more experience to hit that level 15 threshold, but we are well underway. Yeah, um, I know that Eevee can leave this floor with about 14.1 in terms of levels. Uh, it's got to be slightly higher for Bika because you fight the Sandrew trainer first. The Sandrew, pardon me, trainer first. Um, so that's going to be a thing. <laughs> These spawns are kind of risky, though. I feel like both of our runners here are looking for something a little bit more exciting. Maybe maybe a big blob? Maybe a... Um, maybe anything else? Yeah. Then bats? No more zooms. Yeah, Matt's gonna respawn that room, and I don't really blame him for that, because that was rough. Unfortunately, though, now on a Paris catch chain... Uh, so, not really seeing any Clefairies. There, there, I said the word, and there it is. Thanks, Base Clef. Uh, and of course, you know, if we do see a Trouble Clef, they are going to be nothing but trouble. And that's why they're called that. You know, I should I should have known that. You know, Pokemon is known for its punny names. So true. Oh. So oh. I think Matt's okay now, but it's pretty close. That is uh, a level 9 magic crap on Matt's side. He just didn't want to deposit, it's fine. Yeah, like, th there is an interesting tension here in the strats between, okay, you know, I need to deposit, but that costs time, versus do I just sit here and absorb the levels, even though all the level ups take time. Um, different runners have different opinions on when and where and uh, what to deposit. Oh, come on, Matt. You could have avoided that geode. <laughs> it's okay. It's Mount Moon. We're warming up. There's, there's lots to happen still in this race. Yep. 
Yeah, Iron comfortably with two catches over Matt, which has to feel pretty good. Um, the experience, I think, I think they're both okay. M Matt may need to catch something on the next route just because this is like on the bubble. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. One of these days, I just want to sit down and get the numbers for how much experience you get from this final floor of Mount Moon and onward. Apologies to tech, uh, because my cat just tried to use my keyboard as a pillow, so uh, if you got a message, I apologize. Okay, so we're looking at a drowsy on Pika's screen. Matt's having fun running into as many Pokemon as possible, because they just like to spawn on him even though the lure is gone. <laughs> And we're just making our way through Mount Moon. Wow, this is um standard so far. You never like to see standard standardness happen in a room that's gonna be full of memes, but may maybe right. they were just lying to lull us into a false sense of security. Well, maybe the meme is the lack of memes. Yeah, maybe the memes were the memes we made along the way. I mean, I do enjoy a good meme. <laughs> I was hoping we'd see something silly, but who knows? Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got one, two, three more fights here in this Mountain of Moons. And then our runners will be on their way to Cerulean City. Just how many moons? Um, did any of them hit double Moonstone? I don't think so. Then I guess it's just two moons? I guess so, just two moons. Yeah, because I guess there's four moons here, because there's... The always spawning moonstone down the ladder we don't go down. I don't know. There's a lot of moons. Lots of moons. Every moon. Okay, yeah, now we're getting it, up to the nerd fight. Oop, go ahead. It, it's basically the Mario Odyssey of caves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, so now we're coming up to the nerd fight, and uh, what's your preferred fossil? Um. I'm really basic. I I, okay, so... I I am all here for Helix. Okay, okay. Um, like... Oh, Kabuto looks cool, but I don't know. There, I, I, I really like... Uh... Omelette Knight. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. How about you? Yes. In in game, I really like Kabuto, um, but uh, oh! I, I am a oh! ooh. Okay, okay. So that's a bonjour. Uh, that's bonjour. pretty nice. Uh, we let. Oh, the Iron Iron is going for it too. We appreciate that. Good, mm -hmm. good. Only level five, but that does mean it will be slightly easier to catch. Yeah, there go my points too. Oops. Nice throw, Iron. Hopefully that gets in. I think the chances are actually pretty good because it's not level 11. Still 700 experience is nothing to sneeze at. Level 16- No, that's nice. On the Bika really makes uh, your Misty Ranges a lot easier to hit, even if you don't have too many AVs. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I see that Matt is going to just have enough experience to hit level 15 getting out of this tunnel. So a little, well, now quite a bit behind Iron in terms of experience. <laughs> um, but hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. Uh, the Eevee fight is, I believe, an extra turn, but it's not super bad. Um, actually, I just realized Matt's minus special offense. This could be rough. We'll find out. Yeah. And like... If, if you're Matt, do you stop and save before the Misty fight, or do you just risk it for the biscuit and... Um, I looked at Matt's attack. I think you just kind of go for it, and it should be okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Chad is saying, eh, minus sp spadef is fine. It's like slightly dangerous, but it's probably going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And that's good. I think I think Matt's going to see if he can find anything in the grass, uh, just to give him a little more experience or a couple catches, because Iron certainly got a few in the hand right now. Uh, yeah. Uh, nope, just rats and birds. Not useful. Yeah, like if that rat is glowing and you're super concerned, I'd consider going for it. But at this point. Matt is just pushing for it, and I'm sure at this point Iron is not worried. Yeah, no, um, I, and the nice thing about rats is that you can kind of catch them anywhere starting mm -hmm. about now. So at any point, if if Matt needs the experience of the catches, that's where you can start looking for them, so. So speaking of things we're going to say the incorrect names of, uh, Matt's teaching some moves to the EP. Yes. Uh, are you saying that I should be mispronouncing the moves, too? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got Zippy Zap, we just learned. So that'll par paralyze on hit all the time, and that's how we're going to beat Misty, actually. Uh, and then we got Fuego Fueg. Uh, uh, that's going to burn every time you hit. Uh, and that's really useful, because that, that has the attack of Pokémon coming at us, and Eevee has not, not a lot of defense. Uh, and I, I missed uh, learning Splishy Splash, um, and that's basically Giga Train, but for a water type. And that's pretty nice. Yep. Uh, and then, and then Pika what's Pika side, learning? Uh, Pika's learning Zappy Zip, which is oh. a plus two priority move with 50 base power that always crits. That seems pretty good. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right. <laughs> now we're both... We're, thankfully, everyone's level 15, so we're going right into Misty's gym, and we're going to beat up some water types. Yeah, luckily uh, for runners of the, this caliber, you know, two very strong runners... Um, navigating the, the moon cave is not too, too rough, especially knowing where this experience is. Yeah, no, um, this should be fun. Oh, a quick attack. Okay, well, I mean, that's safe at least. And yeah, being mm -hmm. plus special attack, Matt gets the KO on that Goldeen. That's pretty nice. I think I actually saw more attack ABs than I did special attack ABs, though. I could have been wrong. I wasn't paying super close attention. If Matt wants to correct me, he can. Is Matt getting Gary Area this? I hope so. Because he just deposited everything except the magic crap. <laughs> That's odd, because Matt has Weeping Bell Mark. Oh, but also has Gary Ariados marked. Well, and look at that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Oh yeah, I guess, I, I guess Matt does have both. Yeah, okay, okay. That, I mean, you know what? Sure. Of course Matt's okay, this is just what Matt does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, because level ups take so long to happen in this game, Normally, we sacrifice, you know, those 14 or 15 levels for our our Sprout and our Udish just to, you know, throw up our catch count, have a 2P catch uh, partner Pokemon around, and on Pika's side, handle one more fight. Um, keeping a third Pokemon around that over the course of 15 levels is unusual, but on the other hand, it does shore up a little bit of what we need to worry about. Yeah. Because that's one less Pokemon we have to worry about catching later. It is kind of nice, and also it'll be funny because I think we can ride the Gary Ariados when we get there. Oh, true. That might be a defense against not seeing Rehorn. Yeah, I'm hoping we do see Ryan, though, because that makes a lot of the fights easier in the Rocket Hideout. Yeah. But here's Rival 2. Yep. Um, nothing really to mention on the Bika side. Uh, anything important from Eevee? Uh, no. We're, in fact, nothing is really interesting in the next, like, six fights, and that's what we're going to be doing right now. So, actually, I have a question for both you, Leggy, and for chat. Mm -hmm. Um... And I was just wondering, if y'all were living in a Pokemon region, what region would you like to live in? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, if you asked me, like, ten years ago, I probably would have said Hoenn 
full stop, no questions asked. Um, I love the tropical region, I love the the beach, but these days, I am just getting so exhausted from heat, and I live in the frickin' northeastern United States. Um, so I do want to go so live somewhere where it does get a little cooler in the winter months. Hmm. See, I was just gonna say, like, um, Hoenn, but specifically Four Tree City, because it's it's in Hoenn, it's got a beautiful place to live, because you're up in the treetops, so nice and green, uh, which mm -hmm. would be really good for my mental health. Uh, but I'm also far en enough away from the coastline that if Kyogre wakes up and goes bananas again, I have a little bit of safety. Yeah. And, you know, the, the only bad thing about the Pokemon world is the fail whale waking up. Yes. Never never want your fail whale, flail whale to wake up. Um, mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, I'm glad we were all able to go on to Hoenn there. It seems pretty easy. Um, though I also ha can see why you might want to go for, like, um, I was going to say Unova, but I don't think I want to live in Unova. Just a place yeah. that has, like, a, a cool environment that I can go visit every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in, I'm still waiting for the version based on Canada, because it'll just be like, because um, we do have changing climates, so there's going to be mm -hmm. places that like, you go north and it's just all ice, but the rest of it is just like this landscape of like, you've got mountains and you've got the Canadian Shield and forest everywhere, and then you've got the, the, the coasts. It'd be a fun region, and Pokemon will never make it because Canada's not big enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like I definitely would be down for a Kanto Johto, like, vacation if I lived in the Pokemon world. Yeah, that seems okay. Um, honestly, outside of, you, you know, the storyline of Sword and Shield, Gl Galar seems perfectly fine, assuming the politics are way different than real life. <laughs> One could hope. <laughs> Um, Paldea seems neat. Yeah, I was thinking about Paldea. There's no buildings, so I wouldn't love to be protected from the elements if it does, like, sandstorm or whatever. So... Who knows? I don't know. I I feel like Alola would be lovely to go on vacation for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I really would love to, like, live in... I mean, you know what, Johto would actually be pretty good to vacation in as well. Yeah. You know, I could see myself living in Sinnoh. Yeah? Yeah. Like, there's enough diversity of climate, you know, if you're into winter sports, you know, there's some really good mountains around, you still have some coastline, um, lots of museums, uh, assuming that the champion gets off her butt and actually opens up some. That's a good point. And there is one mountain to climb if you like hiking. Mm -hmm. Just one really big mountain. Yeah. Iron should really stop playing Hangman and actually do the speedrun. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the defense is that last time he did this, a Squirtle is going to come. Uh, because he won Hangman and then a Squirtle appeared three seconds later. I don't think we can do, get that twice. And if we do, then I'm going to eat my words. But you know what? Whatever. You know? Like, on the one hand... If it doesn't show up, you get to be right. If it does show up, yeah, you're wrong. But also, imagine how hype that would be. It's true. Yeah, and I'm going to be making tofu tacos for dinner, so that sounds okay. Ooh, that sounds delicious. I'm looking forward to it. Hell yeah. Cleaning up the last few fights here on Nugget Bridge. Uh, our reward is a nugget, um, so it's aptly named. That's good. Uh, and then we're going to be going to the top of Cerulean Cape, where we're not really catching anything. We're just looking to uh, help this guy named Bill. Yeah. Um, that Pidgey traveled for a while. Oh, gosh. Yeah, one of the interesting things Ooh, about, yeah. you know, uh, flying Pokemon in this game is that they can fly over ledges that terrestrial Pokemon can't cross. Venonat... Glowing no Venonat is not a Squirtle. I'm, I'm sorry, Iron, but that's not how that works. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the question I have now is, is Matt going to catch um, five more of these Meow Meows? 
or is it just going to be the one? Um, one way to find out. I do not control the the rate at which um the runners catch Pokemon. Neither do I. But we're about to find out. No, that's just a sprout. Okay, we're not we're not <laughs> sticking around for a bunch of meowth, which would have been hilarious, but I would have been here for it. True. God, imagine if that was optimal. That'd be bad if it was if if it was optimal. I feel like we would say this isn't mo this isn't optional. We'd find something else that's mo that's up op that's optimal because that sucks. You know, fair. Oh, if there were two that spawned, Matt definitely would have done the chain, which you know that's pretty nice. One thing you can do in the casual files is if you catch six Meowth or six, is it Growlithe? Okay, so six Meowth in in um in Bika or sorry in Ebi or in um, Bika you catch the Growlithe you will get the corresponding evolution from the other game, so you'd get Persian Rugs or you'd get Arcanine. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about those is that you know they are rideable Pokemon that are both faster than your baseline speed. Which is why and they're also just useful to have for things like Diploma or yeah. AOP. And I think that they're both... Oh, we got um, a ditch! Oh, a ditch! We love to see a good ditch. Let's see, what does that beat the time sheep set? I think it does. Yeah, that was like a 44-40-something. And I think the time that sheep had was a 45. Mm-hmm. So that's so we... pretty spicy. The bounty's currently in Iron's Court. Mm -hmm. Awesome Bill's ditched quick. Oh, and so did Matt. Matt also ditched Bill. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We love to see a good ditch, Bill. It makes us happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 45-29. So currently Iron is winning the ditch Bill bounty. Yeah, both of them did uh, beat the previous bounty time uh, Iron was just a little bit ahead of the foot race. Just a little ahead. Uh, that's pretty spicy. I like it. Uh, and now, okay, so consolation prize. We didn't see the Squirtle on the route, but we are going to see a Squirtle right here. And that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, pardon me, I mean Squirtle. Squirtle turtle. Squirrel turtle. Exactly. A squirrel, yeah. Yeah. That's where you get the tail. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, we're not doing bingo cards this race, so I'm not going to say the thing. Uh, now we're going to go down to Route 6, uh, and Route 6 is a big deal for Pika, but not a really big deal for Eevee. E e so what, what's going on in Route 6, Leggy? Uh, so, down in Route 6, uh, first and foremost, there is a hidden rare candy that our runners could pick up, um, depending on how their spawns look. It's one of the slower rare candies we need to, we'll want to pick up. Over the course of the game, we will need to get four of them, plus an extra one if you want to evolve your haunts. Um, but it can be useful just to go for it, just to give Pokemon a little more time to spawn. Uh, da down on Route 6, we do have a bunch of interesting Pokemon, including uh, Jugglypugs and a Bra. A Bra? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Appearing in both versions, you have uh, the the fox and you have the pupper in. You you also have Pidge Two, the sequel to Pidge. Where did Pidge Two Electric Boogaloo come from? Uh, Trubs is running down the uh, what grassy are you doing? area. Matt, Matt, what are you doing? Um, I know we're memeing, but what is this? Matt may be choosing to meme a little way too. harder Wait than I ever thought possible. Is he going to give the daycare man the, the magic crap? No? Okay. <laughs> For nope. a second, I thought maybe that's what was happening. Yeah, but we are going to pick up a few items down here in the underground path. We're going to pick up a hidden nugget and a lure. The lure we're going to use right before we get up to Route 6. Uh, to ensure a Pokemon spawn. On the Bika side, it is important that we either get a level 17 dog, which is the level that the lure spawns at, or we get the Abra and evolve it immediately 
uh, to use as a partner Pokemon for the next rival fight. Uh, we're definitely getting to the section of the game where Bika's lack of coverage really comes into play, and Bika really needs to use uh, friends for two controller fights, whereas Evoy definitely has the ability to solo a lot of the fights that Bika struggles with. Yeah. Oh, Matt forgot to lure, I think. Um, so, uh, one of the things for... Wait a minute. Oh, no. EB is going to be looking for as much experience as possible. Um, it's going to be handling a lot of the game itself, but that means that we have to keep pace with these Pokémon that spawn at increasingly higher levels. Uh, and that can be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I see... Oh, right. At Iron Cut caught the bonjour, so has to move away from one of those great balls. Oh, that was a close throw. But luckily there is the glowing juggly pug uh, on Iron's side, assuming it oh, didn't despawn. We do like juggly pugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, look! A glow glowing vulps and juggly pug for Matt. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good to see. Oh, that robbed. Robbed. Absolutely robbed of the oh. circle on that throw. A bra! Ooh, a bra! Uh, good news is uh, Iron does have a couple of Nanod berries, uh, while raspberries make Pokemon easier to catch. Um, Nanod berries will make the Pokemon move around a lot less, keep it in place. Oh, well, that's that's nice for Matt. They're just sitting there. He hasn't even gone to go get the candy yet. Um, they were literally just right there, so you gotta try and catch those. Um, it looks like the Vulpin is gonna run around a little bit, though, which is kind mm -hmm. of annoying, but here we are. The Dill Bitcher? Ah, maybe we shouldn't say that on commentary. B the Ditch Biller. Apparently that was the first juggly pugs I've ever seen, like, not immediately start to, inf it, like, rise up into the air. So that's pretty funny. Yeah, wild. So both of our runners getting a fair few catches here. Uh, Iron's Bika is almost level 21, which is an important level because that's when Bika learns Thunderbolt. Oh, uh, okay. Which, if my 90s uh, CD... Uh, was accurate is a great electric attack until you get ground down by a marrow whack. That that does sound about right. Um, yeah, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Matt's finally going for the rat. Both runners are actually getting a rat here, which is cool. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Obviously, on Matt's side, it's going to go straight into his boxes, so don't need to worry about it getting levels. Um, that does evolve the bra for iron, getting up to the cabra. I see that Matt's only level 19, which it would be nice to be level 20, because I think right now we might be getting outsped by the PG2 Electric Boogaloo. Um, but nothing else is really showing up, so I think Matt's just gonna... Yep, great. Executed the Vermilion skip very well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's nice. Yes, Iron. Uh, Matt is going for the Gary Area dose. Yeah, both of our runners doing a little bit of menuing. Uh, we'll see if Iron gets the Vermilion skip. Lining up and through and clean. That puppy was trying to stop Iron from getting that skip, but didn't succeed, which is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Iron doing a little bit of party menuing, depositing Cabra, uh, sticking with the pupper for the boat rival fight. And yeah, this is what, the second shop of the run, and we're getting a lot of our mid-game supplies, a couple of escape mm -hmm. ropes, we're getting a couple of extra... Um, couple of extra status items, a whole bunch of lures, some X special attacks and X attacks, uh, and I think a few more great balls as well. Um, after selling a lot of extra items in our part, in our possession, including the raspberries, apparently. Um, that's neat. Oh, needed the guard spec because you're too slow. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because the um, the, the Pidge 2 Electric Boogaloo can do this thing called Sand Attack, uh, which lowers your accuracy, and it's really annoying. Uh, and because yeah. we don't outspeed it in EB, sometimes we buy a guard spec for that fight, as well as we buy a guard spec for the other EB fight that's going to be happening on the way to Route 10. Mm -hmm. Iron uh, was a little short on money from t selling Pokeballs, only managed to afford uh, 12 X special attacks, but that's more th than likely to be fine. Well, I know that's because he's already got 20 Pokemon. Yeah. Which is a lot for Boat Rival, by the way. Yes. Like, Trubs has a good number of Pokemon caught. Iron yeah. has an incredible number of Pokemon caught. Yeah, I'd call 17 really solid for this stretch of the run. Yeah. Um, whereas 20 is just like, okay, okay, they're AOP player. Like, come on. <laughs> Right. We're going. Okay, so it looks like Trubs uh, is heading for the rival a little ahead of Iron, but that's not saying much because mm -hmm. uh, Iron has all these Pokemon caught. Please feel free to insert the copy pasta in chat here. Uh, and we're going to see uh, Matt 2C. And does Pika 1C or 2C this fight? Uh, Pika usually 2Cs uh, this fight. If Iron was level 21, there are 1C strats for it. Um, okay. But the strat is you just uh, Oko the Pidge 2 immediately. And you uh, really only have the uh, pupper to handle the Odish that your rival has. That makes sense, okay, yeah. And I guess the, the Cadabra would also be really good at that too, if it was mm -hmm. the right level. Yep. Cool, it, okay. Which, which it was, um, Iron had the option to go for either strat. Uh, I think the Pupper is a lot safer, especially on the final fight on, the, on Route 9, because right. the big rat there knows Crunch, which oh, okay. if you're a uh, Catabra is not fast enough, we'll just one-shot. Okay, okay. Hopefully that puppy had good special attack. I didn't see. I was not paying attention. <laughs> Perfect. We're really doing... We're, we're memeing today, so who cares if we have weak commentary? We're getting carried by the weight of Gary Ariados. Look, we are setting up interesting surprises for the audience. We sure are. I'll say that much. <laughs> okay, I, I need to do a quick service announcement for a chat. Um, keyboards are not pillows. I don't understand. My cat is trying really hard to use my keyboard as a pillow. I've got a cat here who is definitely approaching my keyboard now. I don't know if he heard you. I don't know how he could have, but... Yeah, I am wearing headphones, so it would be weird, but I would not put it past the little boy. Oh, cats. Right? You gotta love them. They, they are adorable. Okay, Matt is now ditching SSN, uh, now that we've learned Cutty Cut, and we're gonna go Cutty Cut a bush uh, that is not the one next to Serge's gym. Uh, that would involve fighting electric types, and who wants to do that? So we're going to go back to near Cerulean City and turn east. Uh, and we're going to head to Rock, Rock Tunnel via Route 10, where the next big catching section of the run is. We do have two more fights to get through, uh, but for the most part, they're non-issues. Uh, Matt does get the second half of Rebellion Skip, Lickety Split, no issues. Always love a good vermilion skip. Mm -hmm. That's one of the harder tricks to do in the run, I think, though. It is deceptively tricky, um, especially because, like, if you know the setup, at least for me, my brain then will overcorrect for the setup. Yep, there's that, and then there's, like, it, it, the slightest flinch will set you off. Or, yep. like, if you accidentally, like, if you have Joy-Con Drift just a little bit or something like that, it's all bad. It's all bad. 
Oh yeah. On um, cat update, I am now holding him like baby. Oh, good. That's adorable. Um, here is the cutty cut bush. There it goes. Bye bye. Um, there is a patch of grass up there that we will not be accessing today. It is too far away. Meanwhile, Matt's going to evolve the jungle pug, which is nice. Um, t so we can just get an extra catch out of the way there, and he can use it for death fodder later if he wants. <laughs> yeah, jungle pug is technically optimal if you have to evolve something um, with a moonstone. Uh, just at random because it's the only one that does not learn a move upon evolution. Yep. Uh, Bika will only really go for it if we get two Moonstones uh, because we really need one of the Nidos for a Bika partner. That makes sense. Um, yeah, Rough and Tough is really good for um, for J and J as well because um, mm -hmm. it's a big old fairy type, which is. Uh, not it's new to this generation i guess but not really new in the game sense um so yeah they finally basically back updated it the, but there's no dark types in the game still and that's kind of sad yeah it's weird because every other type is represented you know you've got uh the magnets for steel types you've got you know uh rough and tough and uh base and trouble clef for fairies but they're literally are not any Kanto Pokemon that are dark type. Unless you count their Alolan forms, which are obtainable if you spend a long time to trade. So there's that. Yep. That's unfortunate though, because um, Alolan Meow Meow looks like Garfield. So it's, you know, <laughs> less cool. And of course, you know, Alolan, Fo Alolan Fox is adorable. So true. So true. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, not Maybe. as big a fan as Greta, but I am a big fan. You can't ride a Lolan Meow Meow? Wow, okay. Well. Not worth it then. Right. Now, okay, here's the real question A Lolan Meow Meow or Galarian Meow Meow? Do I have to include their evolutions in this? You may factor it into your decision. I think I have to go for the Galarian one then. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Perserker, I'm kind of like whatever on, but I really don't like a lowly person. Really don't. That is fair. Oh, thank you for posting your kitty in the in the Discord. I appreciate that. Look, you know, if I'm going to talk about a cat, I have to be a cat tax. It's true. That's why my commentary shifts always start with my cat. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I take the most absurd pictures of this man. <laughs> uh, Iron getting very close to getting Glum evolved. Um, not sure where Matt is with his evolutions, um, but we do see... Uh, the boys! Oh, it's a Nidoff party, or Nidom party. The boys are back in town! Apparently, they, they had a convention. Alright, we got a glowing a glowing spear for, for Matt, as well as a, a Nidoff. Um, <laughs> so that'll be nice to get a little start. It would be cool to see some more stuff on this route, um, just a little bit, uh, but yeah. it's a good start, at least. <laughs> yeah, Spirit of Lactone definitely is one of those Pokemon that I feel like spawns way less for me than it does anyone else. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Matt's a little lower on experience than I would like to be for this point, so hopefully he gets some better spawns, whether that's like through them naturally spawning or some respawning of the route. Uh, yeah, yeah, our runners rough. did both buy a <laughs> repel, which yeah. can be used to instantly despawn the route. Otherwise, they can go down and enter uh, the Rockets versus Lorelei cutscene, which will despawn and allow them to respawn. Right. Oh, and there's Glum. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah Beak okay. is at level 23, which is uh, very good. Um, honestly, as long as you get Thunderbolt by the time you get off Route 10, you're happy. Um, 23 means we're starting to get into the range where you can start doing alternate strats. Yep. Okay, so, so Matt got a need on as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. I saw the bell sprout was like level 19 in a bit. Um, so this probably won't evolve it, but it will be close. I, I hope Matt finds one more thing. I kind of wouldn't hate to see um, Rat 2. That'd be kind of cool. <sighs> Iron's going down and getting the Lorelei cutscene started. Um, not sure if he's done with catches or is uh, doing this to refresh the route. Let me check his tracker and see what, what I can divine from those tea leaves. Um, the tea leaves are suggesting that um, might be respawning the route. Mm -hmm. Though I guess there's time to update the tea leaves. You could always, you know, move move them around a little bit in the, in the glass. No one will catch you. Yeah. Like... He's still missing uh, Nidoff. He's still missing Crab. Um, but even then, both of our runners have 56 and 57 planned right now. That's what Gary Ariados does for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't even see that Iron has Crabby planned. Um, so might not be counting on it. Uh, we'll see if Iron decides to go back up for trying to get need off, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. This cutscene is long. Why is it so long? Right? Well, it's, it, it's because Laura lies here, and I just feel like time stops. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah. I don't think, um, wait, this is a different kind of, uh, boys back in town. Yeah, the, the, the the boys are older now. <laughs> the boys are Billarino now. <laughs> no, no, that, that was back on Route 25. They're here again, too. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's like the hangover. They're going to a bachelor party. Uh, Kate here on Ironside was being a little jumpy, but uh, a good throw. Did you just call him Kate? Yeah. Okay. Ready, Kate. Ah, I see, I see. Gotta, gotta not teach slam. Okay, so Matt, into rock tunnel at 21. I'm okay with that. Um, it's a little, like, it's a ton- oh, it's not even that low, honestly. It's pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cub1 signing on. Yeah, it, it looks like the only Pokemon from Route 10 that uh, Matt was really missing was the Crab, so... Yeah, I guess so. I guess he got a little bit luckier than Iron did. Um, but that's okay. Both of our runners are still over 50 planned, um, so mm -hmm. everything's fine at the moment. Um, we'll figure it out. Ma uh, Matt will probably opt to catch um, Ra Katie uh, a little bit later. Um, now going for a Zub, though. We love a good Zub. Except when Zub. they move around like that. Yeah, Zub is a great Pokemon to use in a nab on if you have one. Um, oh, 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 we we got Rehorn. Oh, I love Ryan. Uh, Iron getting a Zub. Uh, Fero Nolactone getting evolved on Matt's side. So, what are your feelings on Rock Tunnel in general? Uh, between like. What are you what are you looking for catch wise and how are the fights in here on the EV side? So I so I wouldn't mind Rock Tunnel except it decides to never give me a good Rock Tunnel. Mm. Whenever I play this game I always get like the worst spawns so I have to end up like refreshing floors multiple times to get my Ryan. Um, but obviously when you're EV you want to try and get the the ride as soon as possible. Um, the higher level it is, the better chance you're going to have in Hideout. Um, so you want to get that if you can see it. Otherwise, you're going to try and get everything you can in Rock Tunnel as Eevee. 
Um, mm. The fights in here aren't so bad. Um, this, there's two scary ones. Uh, I forget Mr. Machop guy's name, uh, but we do have to burn that Machop, otherwise we basically die. Uh, and that one's kind of scary. The Kangaskhan can be scary as well, but mostly we're worried about that one and Ace Trainer Sophia. Um, Ace Trainer Sophia, especially if you get burned on that fight, can be really risky for Eevee. That's the uh, Volpe and Cabra, right? Yes, that's that's correct. Um, and so, like, if you get burned in particular, it's really scary when the, when the Cabra comes out, um, mm -hmm. be because Psybeam tends to target Eevee, and in this case, Matt's minus special defense. Uh, and I've definitely seen... So the first time I actually went through this game, um, I was doing, like, a slow, a slow walk, basically, a speed walk, mm -hmm. with just the notes to learn the route, and uh, that fight, my Rhyhorn died, and there was just, like nothing in the notes about what to do when your Rhyhorn died. So oh, I, was, no. I was confused, and I thankfully it was, a, it was a walk, so I could pause it, and I just went, Echi, what do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are your notes at what do. Yeah. And on the Beka side, you know, these fights aren't actually that scary, but we do to see, like, most of them. Um, we can one see the fight we were just talking about, um, but as you mentioned, you know, you do risk getting burned by Volpe. Okay. And since Bika doesn't buy burn heal, it's a lot scarier for us. Oh yeah, that's true. Right, we buy two yeah. of those. Yeah, luckily we do have the full restore that Blue gave us earlier, but... You know, at the same time, we do kind of want to save those if possible. Time out. Blue gave us a full restore. Are you sure? It's a Shalor sh Sable. A but... Shalor Sable. Ride the Onyx. I'm pronouncing it back. as well as Ride I'm pronouncing the Pokemon names. Oh, he paused too. Mm -hmm. I was like, come on, Matt, go back and ride the Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, But yeah. Like, we do have the one item we could use as a full heal in battle right now. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, I was like, full restore? That's a different item. Oh, yeah, full heal, sorry. Uh, is anything gonna spawn for Matt? There's a Graveler, we'll take that, I guess. Yeah. Um, like, a, a, a Reveller? Yeah. Yeah, a experience bomb. Exactly, yeah. Or, or boom strats, depending on what, what, mm -hmm. what notes you're using. Yep. Boomstrat's the experience bomb. Is my new favorite Osonic OC. Oh. Okay, so Iron is already at 31. Mm -hmm. uh, and he hasn't found Machop yet. So, or Cubone actually. So this could get up to as high as like 33, which is which is quite solid. Um, if you That's leave honestly Arsenal, like, 33. wild. Yeah, yeah, that would be really good if they show up. It'd be yeah. nice if they would. Um, if they don't, that's unfortunate for Iron, because that takes his plan down to 50, so he is hoping at least one of them spawns. Yeah. If you get at least one of them, you're probably at a good spot. Um, ideally, obviously, you want to see all of them. Uh, oh, my horn looks good. Feels right at home here. here. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so the, the reason I say that's not great is because, um, 54 planned, Iron's got Tentacle marked already as part of that 54, uh, and I hate ha having to catch Tentacle. If I can avoid it, I will. So, be nice if we got w some more spawns in here. Um, both of our runners are schmoovin', though. It would be nice Ooh. if Matt- it, it would be- it would be nice if Matt could get any spawns. That'd be cool. Yeah. Iron getting the one shot on Kanga oh, that's is spicy. really nice. That is uh, actually quite rare. Oh, uh, Matt's at kind of low health here. Oh, he's he's. Oh, it's fine. Stop there. Good. Okay, everything's fine. Oh. Yeah, we got the burn, which you know is going to reduce that outcoming damage a lot. You never nice. like seeing Comet Punch though, because that can just do a lot of damage for no reason. Yeah. Also, Iron did get the the Kung Fu Master, uh, and that's good. Uh, so, 
we'll move on with that one. Uh, yeah, Matt, really? Okay, I'm looking again at Matt's thing. All, all Matt needs is that one thing we all love, which is a Rhyhorn. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, a Kangaskhan. We'll take either of those. Ryan Hello? Reynolds, where are you? Yeah, where are you, Ryan Reynolds? Oh, okay, we're checking the Pokedex. Uh, yep, there's no Rhyhorn in there. Yeah, uh, definitely looks like a accidental input to... I, I know it was. Go back, go back, Matt. There's an effort, there's Rhyhorn. Uh, <laughs> uh, Did uh, you go uh, around? Uh. I forget now. I have no idea how this particular room of the cave is actually well, shaped. Well, he's, he's moving around, so hopefully he's going for the Rhyhorn and it's still there. There it is. Hoof! Heck okay. yeah. We found a Rhyhorn. It's not going to be level 25 for Haida, which is unfortunate, but at least we have one. Mm -hmm. um, the the funny thing going on is Iron, of course, ran by a Rhyhorn. <laughs> Look, a rare charm. Ran... Uh, you know what they? You know there is a command for this particular instance. Is uh, it the one that Matt just put in the chat? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Though, I mean, like, you know, we can't say anything about that because, you know, there's no Cubone for, for Iron yet. And hey, it broke out, so, you know, hmm. Yeah. Like, I am getting a little worried about Iron's Great Ball Count. Uh, mm -hmm. the worst thing that happens with that one, though, is that you do get 20 after you finish Hideout, so, you know. it's Okay, now it's not so good. Oh, he's running away. Mm. Bad call with our chat, I will say. Mm -hmm. Like... I respect the choice to be like, okay, you know, this is not going well. I just need to, you know, cut my losses and run. He really heard you say, um, worried about the ball count. <sighs> Look, I've run into some situations in this game where uh, I've really had to sweat going into Pokemon Mansion with just Ultras and uh, Pokeballs. That's fair, yeah. Uh, I See, in, this is the kind of case where, well, I feel like Iron could pick up those Great Balls. Though, that said, we do need to go very fast in this race if we have any hope of moving on to the next round. Uh, we, uh, both of our runners are going to be shooting to get lower than the median time, basically. Mm-hmm. Do we know the median time? No, we're, we don't. Um, after this race, will be the average of the two. Uh, so, you know, we'll we'll <laughs> one will be faster and one will be slower than the median time when this race is done, and that's kind of funny. But over the course of the next uh, seventeen people running, we'll probably see that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still got a number of rip. Really exciting races after this one. This is just setting the benchmark for the rest of this particular round. Yeah, and we don't even have them all scheduled yet. I think there's still two that we need to schedule. But it looks like um, there, the tournament is going to be taking a little bit of a break for GDQ. Not everybody could schedule their race in this week, and that's okay. So we'll take a, we'll do half of it, and we'll take a break for GDQ, and then we'll come back and have the, re the next half of the round. Um, yep. So. You've got stuff to look forward to this week, and, G and then GDQ next week, and then the week after, it's going to be more more races. Uh, and that sounds great to me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, in the off week, you know, if people are, you know, not at GDQ and looking for something to do, I might look to schedule a gorilla race or two, you know, for fun. Please. Those are, what the heck was that? Iron, um, calibrate your Joy-Cons. Chrono Trigger Cross Slash? Yeah, for real. Literally, it just crossed. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, look, the rich get richer because it's a Cubone, and then that happened. Iron, calibrate your Joy-Cons. I mean, the Cubone still got caught, so, you know, who can say whether or not that was a good or bad thing? Iron just shatter paused there, just like what what is even happening? I don't know what to say. And I understand and respect that. Me too. Um, both of our runners now on the same trainer for the first time in a while. You did before the race? What the heck? Okay, Joy Cons are just a scam, apparently. 
Uh, okay, yeah, no, we're at, now we're on the same trainer, though Matt is notably a couple cokes down. Um, which is, you know, that doesn't mean anything, it just means that Iron is slightly ahead of in the, in the race right now. Mm -hmm. Um, which, oh, that is some low health, but thankfully we've got Bouncy Bubble. So, okay, Faint not be real later, but that Meowth just used Faint. It, it did. Um, there is a place where Faint is supposedly real, it's not real. Um, don't, mm -hmm. don't kid yourselves. Uh, yeah. We can confirm at least it is a move in the game that at least one Pokemon yeah, knows. So, at least one, uh, but Yamon Lee doesn't know it. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. All right, we have no experimental evidence. None whatsoever. Um, it's never happened in this tournament, therefore it's not real. Um, mm -hmm. it, including last year's tournament. Um, so what we're learning is to calibrate your Switch gyroscope. And mm. now we're both coming up to the same place. So we're not actually, the, the race is still pretty close. We're a couple Pokemon oh, yeah. different, but things are still looking pretty good. Um, let me look at everyone's trackers for a second to see if I can get some information. Yeah, and while we're doing that, um, just mentioning that we are going on up to the tower rival fight. Uh, both of our runners are in a spot where this should not be an issue whatsoever for either of them. Uh, Bika does a 2C strat here while uh, Matt is doing a 1C. Yes, and I regret to inform everyone that there will be no Kangaskhan or Onyx in this run, and that is sad. But, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't spawn... They, they, Matt barely got a Rhyhorn, so what can you do? Um, complain to your uncle who works at Nintendo if anyone here has one of those. I'm sure someone does. Raise your hand in chat if you've got an uncle that works at Nintendo. Or in the YouTube comments. What's up, YouTube? Oh yeah, hey, YouTube! Don't forget to like and subscribe! Ring that, click that donate button. Um, and join the Discord uh, if you want to participate next year. Or just hang out. Uh, we yeah. learned today that a lot of us are over 30 and cool. <laughs> yes, we are both over 30 and cool. One way or another. Indeed. Uh, 69 special attack on the Bika. Nice. Uh, let me go look at the notes to see if that's anything too exciting. Um, it does mean there's a chance for J and J3 that that Bika could oh, yeah. go for uh, plus four uh, Thunderbolt on Wezzing. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looks like if Bika were to do that fight right now, it would be about a 50-50, but we're expecting a, at least one more level up between now and then. At least one. I feel like it's probably closer to two. Mm -hmm. And if we get to, uh, we are in 100% range town. That'd be pretty nice. So now we're coming up to, we're going to Rocket Hideout, which we've talked about a couple times before, but on the way, we're actually going to be fighting a trainer that is kind of a staple in Pokemon games, which is a trainer with a Clefairy that knows Metronome. Um, and we don't, we're not going to see it from Iron, because as mentioned before, Fairy types are in this game, and we have a Needle King with Poison Jab. Um, so it's not going to be fun to see that happen. Um, Instead, we'll, we might actually see that on Matt's screen because we don't have double edge, mm -hmm. I don't think. Uh, so, you know, get your bets in chat. Are we going to do a 30% flinch or what move are we going to see Metronome use? Yeah. So it is worth noting, uh, one of my partner's favorite Pokemon is in fact Clefairy. Um, and I very much enjoy uh, telling Faye to look away when we get to this exact scene. <laughs> You can't see the base clef go down. Mm-hmm. You can't go any lower. No. Someone in chat just said, I'm 20, and I'm just thinking about that, um, I guess it's TikTok meme. How old are you? I'm 20. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. We're gonna headbutt this Clefairy for Matt, and it flinched. All right, no, no metronome today, which is good and bad. 
Um, it's good because it's bad because we don't get to see the the, the funny haha, and but it's good uh, <laughs> because uh, we don't get to see any shenanigans. Because I think it was the other day we saw a guillotine. <laughs> Not fun to see guillotine. Interesting. Uh, Iron doing a strat I haven't seen yet, going around the outside to avoid cutting the second bush. As it turns out, if you hug the bottom wall there, uh, the spinner in the middle of that grass 100% can't see you. Oh. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, that is something that people in the Discord were talking about uh, a few days ago. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I don't think I've seen Enchi do that, and I've seen him run a lot of Pico. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, Pico wants to pick up the Firestone there so that you could evolve Puppy into Arcanine. Um, and normally what most people do is you cut the bush on the right side, walk through, grab it, cut, cut the bush on the left side, and keep going. Iron decided to go mm. all the way around. Um... I'm not sure if it's faster, because it's a little slower on movement, but you save the time on the cut animation. Uh, and you don't have to wait for the lady to spin, which I know some people have done in the past. Well, the thing about the lady spinning is that if you hug the bottom of the screen, she can't see you. So you, you sure. never have to worry about her spinning. Yeah, okay. And now we're seeing um, Madame Celadon in the Pokemon Center in Celadon City. Oh, uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh I was gonna say we're gonna say blue and red, and I realized that uh, Matt got the kickback on the stick, so almost selected yellow, but caught it, which is good, uh, and got modest instead. Yeah, that is deceptively tri tricky to menu. Um, Matt also b picked up another thing there in that Pokemon Center while we were talking. Yes, we picked up something called um, Glitz and Glamour. Uh, which is a move that is a sector type move, and it also sets up light screen for us, which is really handy because we're going to need it for a couple of fights. Um, mm -hmm. It's really good for the section because everything's a poison type. Yeah, it turns out, you know, making your evil team all have Pokemon of the same type is super useful uh, for having one Pokemon sweep through. Yeah, I, I get appreciate... the need. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I do appreciate that Giovanni does break the mold a little bit, unlike uh, evil team leaders from uh, future games. Yeah, I never really, like, I get that they need a theme, but the theme doesn't have to be, oh no, I'm evil, right? Like, it could be any, it could be they're all blue, they're all black, they're all, um, <laughs> maybe we'll do a team where they're all, like, psychic and fairy types instead. That'd be funny. Oh, that would be sick. When when is the game where we're a bad guy again? I want that game. Um, we'll have to see what happens when Pokemon Pizza comes out. <laughs> Pokemon Pizza. Oh yeah, okay. Of course, I'm in Canada, so we call that game ZA. <laughs> Uh, looks like Iron got a really nice crit on the Hypno. I'm looking at this fight with the Hypno, the Hypno, on that screen, and I'm thinking maybe he forgot to X-Attack, or his Eevee's really bad. Can't tell which. Maybe forgot to X-Attack. Okay. Still gets it taken care of, though we'll need to heal after this fight. Oh boy, I'm how going do you to need to heal? Yeah, you need to heal, because, uh... <laughs> We don't have a, ne a Nido King to take all of the uh, um, fights for us in this place, mm -hmm. so Eevee, Eevee needs all the health it can get. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I know you've got the Water type draining move, but I assume that's not good enough to one shot a rat. It does. It's not. Uh, in fact, um, it's kind of dangerous. To, um, the Raticate can be dangerous, at least. Um, mm -hmm. Katie has Crunch, and it has, uh, the, I forget which Fang it is, but it's the one that halves your health. Um, ah, and that's yep. kind of scary, um, especially since we don't always outspeed that, that Katie, um, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Um, but this fight's actually um, a Rattata, or sorry, um, it's Rat and um, 
orb. The orb. Uh, and the orb has sonic boom, which always does 20 damage, and it, the, um, the splashy splash isn't going to be very good against it. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, iron down, uh, fighting the trainer who is going to use his own special kind of struggle here in a little bit, uh, but going to take out this pile of toxic sludge very quickly. Um, Pollution is bad, folks. Something something Captain Planet reference here. Yep. I did okay. this evolution for chat. Oh my god, it's the voice of God! What happened? Oh baby! Hey, it's Gary Ariados. The memes, the memes, the memes, the memes. Well now we have to ride to that later. Right? Uh, somebody, uh, who hasn't been here for a while just gone to chat. Uh, yeah, this is a meme run. What are you talking about? This is normal. And moving on with the run, we're just gonna go, um, scare some people who have to do safety moments. And we're gonna heal up our team and, uh, go and try to get a lift key. Do we even lift? I do. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, I definitely did work an eight hour day before this. I feel good. Uh, all right, so so Bika's going through the vents. Um, we're not gonna be seen by Jesse and James because we're, we're a tiny electric mouse. Everything's fine. Squeak, squeak, squeaker, squeakums. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, you owe me a new acorn. Mm hmm Well, yeah. in this case, uh, the in, in the other dialect, it's, hey, look, we just got a lift key. Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's the uh, Alolan uh, dialect. Mm hmm Can we talk for a second about how there still isn't a llama Pokemon? Holy heck, you're right. I know, and it's sad. And I, I, I remember when people were speculating about Generation 9 based purely on It being Zerud. in Spain or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and like, oh, it's a, you know, monkey who's got all this jungle uh, vine decor, you know, maybe we'll get a South America region. And then Game Freak's like, lol, not Spain. Nah, it's Spain. Um, a specific region of Spain that I cannot remember off the top of my head, and I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but no, I want the I want the llama Pokemon, Mexico yeah. region. I feel like that's even less likely than the Canada region I was hoping for earlier. My money's on Brazil. Is that too close to Spain? Um, I know so, it's a different language, but yeah, like I think you know from just a like physical location in the world you can do a lot of interesting things especially with the rainforests going on you know the amazon and whatnot yeah um, that's true but yeah like we haven't had a pokemon re region yet that's south of the equator oh so you're telling me they're gonna go do australia now yep uh king trubs over here, giving me the small heart attack I see every time someone does that puzzle the other way than the one I do. I will remind everyone that it is the exact same speed, but it does look yep. scary. Um, it is 100% uh, the, the same thing. It, it Because it's not the one I do, it looks like a mistake every time, but it is, in fact, just as valid. Agreed. Ooh, right. Rhyhorn over on Ironside, getting a little weak in this Jesse and James fight. Um, I it's a little grip low. We'll be fine from the poison, but on one, lived oh. on one. Wow. So I, I, fine is a strong word. Uh, yeah, yeah I was... Rhyhorn is slow. Uh, unfortunately. So, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do on this part now. And thankfully, we do get three revives for free from our arrival before we come here. 
Uh, we're gonna need at least one of those. Yep. Iron, a little upset because it definitely looks like the Drill Run missed round one. Uh, uh, drill Run, um, annoyingly, only has 90% accuracy. I thought it was 95. I'll double check. It's even, Reason. like, it's, it's even worse than that because it's like a 5% miss. Um, oh, so close for, for Matt, but at least we're fast enough here that we should be able to just take out this, this wheezing. So, uh, both fights didn't go great for our players. It is 95, according to Sandy. Yep, that that is what I'm seeing as well. So yeah, even worse. I hate moves that aren't 100% accurate, for real. You, me, and basically anyone who plays Pokemon. <laughs> for real. Uh, all right, so, um, oh, Iron not bothering reviving the Rhyhorn. I guess you guys don't use, you Bika runners don't use Rhyhorn anymore. Nope. Um, the, uh, the next, uh, two fights here are just Bika and the King. Um, after this, uh, when we're up at the tower, the next Jesse and James fight is Bika plus Dog plus Cubone, typically. Um... And we'll be evolving the dog into Arcanine, so uh, it will be. We'll basically be depositing uh, Rhyhorn after we get out of Hideout. Okay, that makes sense. I think we're gonna use it one more time here, and depending on how uh, Matt wants to do the fight in Tower, maybe there as well. Um, but I feel like. Well, he's set up to do the sacrifice strats, so maybe we'll go for that instead, but we'll see. There's time. Definitely wants to keep the Rhyhorn alive here, so that might be partially true. <laughs> Looks like Iron is having um, an archer fight. Ooh, there went the antidotes, so I think that means that God Menu is no more. Yeah, like... So, to explain uh, what Phoenix means by God Menu, uh, the way that we buy things up to, to do the shopping after the Vermilion Menu means that it is exactly one input to hit the X physical attacks and the one input to hit the X special attacks uh, while we're in our bag in combat. Um, obviously using items changes that up a bit, especially if we use the last one in a slot because that causes everything to slide to the left. <laughs> I, I know that reference, but not because I grew up with it. Turns out it doesn't really come up very often in, uh, in Canada. Huh. We have cotton-eyed Joe all over the place instead. And a lot of really freaky PSAs from the 90s. Which I've sure heard later. a few things about your PSAs. <laughs> they are an experience. Um, but we grew up with them, so we just think they're normal. I, I, I won't really go into them, but for the Canadians in the audience, uh, don't you put it in your mouth. Iron's actually two seeing this fight. Is that something that normally happens in Pika? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so the way that the Giovanni fight works is uh, you turn one X special attack on Pika because uh, you don't want to have to worry about playing around fake out. Turn two, you have the Nido use an X special, an X physical attack while Pika goes for a plus six, six zippy zap. And then on the final turn, to secure the uh, the Oko on the Rhyhorn, uh, it's double kick, helping hand at plus six. Oh, I would like to inform you that Gyarados, Gyariados learned Rage. So that's fun. Uh, okay, that makes that makes some sense. That's I forgot, that's where you guys do the fancy, like, more than plus six uh, double kick to kill yeah. that Rhyhorn. We have to go even further beyond. You have to go even deeper. All right, now we're gonna see. I wonder if Ryhor Ryhorn. I wonder if Iron's gonna go pick up those Ultra Balls. Yeah, it's an interesting question because if we look at their catch counts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Yeah, Iron's got eight catches planned, whereas Trubs has one, two, I think it's three, seven? four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. And like, at this stage of the game, that's really how I start evaluating where I am in my catch route, just based on the number of Pokemon that I specifically need to catch. Um, yeah. I, I, I typically just assume that all of my evolutions are just going to fan out correctly. This has caused some issues in the past. See my round one race. <laughs> it's okay. Every once in a while, you just need to master ball a Venonat. I didn't even master ball it. I, I caught it honestly because I forgot about the master ball because I was too busy panicking. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's not better, but it's it, it was still the PB at the time, so it's kind of funny. True. It didn't this make fun to go against those splits a nightmare. I bet. Um, but this is why you uh, don't play off OBS preview, and you also put the game, if you have it digitally, onto the Switch itself. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, Pokemon Tower, are you a lure believer? No. I have been converted to uh, lure athe lure and tower atheism. You're just ambivalent. Oh no, or no! I believe? firmly believe that lure and tower is now a scam. I'm pretty sure it is, because so the, what we're talking about is that uh, lures are supposed to up your catch rate um, because that's what they do. Uh, but in our experience, it doesn't really seem to go that way. We seem to find more things when we don't lure in tower, or it doesn't seem to really help us get more spawns at all. So most people will just take the unlured gamble. Um, one, because it makes things slightly easier to catch, and two, because that way you're not running into so many, like, ghastlies and haunters, because haunters get real big. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, it actually means that, you know, if you start getting unlucky on Route 17, the next major catching section, your odds of running out of lures become a lot better, whereas if you lure in the menu that where you're flying over here, uh, you're usually going to burn through one or two on the way, so yep. it can get a little tight. It's good for, um, you can skip the super lure that you would normally pick up, pick up on Route 17, mm -hmm. uh, and that means that you just have, you know, it's a little bit more consistent, it's a little bit less menuing for you to go through when you get to the last part of catches. Oh, Matt is a person that goes up. I don't think, yeah, that was gonna, I was gonna say, Iron being a little slow with the D summon of this 2C there, it was gonna be a little bit tight to get through mm -hmm. that, that spinner there, but it didn't wind up mattering, so that's good. Yeah, I had, I had not seen uh, people go the way Matt did on that one. I've seen so it that before. Actually... That's the way I go, actually, because mm -hmm. I can't, I can't make the other way work. Um, I don't know what it is, maybe it's because I'm a physical club, but I just couldn't get the timing to be consistent to go bottom, mm -hmm. even though I know that that's people's preferred lane. Uh, apparently I'm a top person myself. That's fair. Um, Matt getting a little trolled by the spinners as Iron overtakes in the foot race. We're, pr we're still pretty close though, we're one catch off and we're on the same trainer. Um, and yeah. since there's since there's so much variance in the late game, this is still looking pretty good, as long as everybody's spawns show up. Um, thankfully, um, both Iron and Matt don't need Tentacool at present, um, and I don't think either of them even need um, Coughing or Grimer either, um, which is nice. Uh, so they, they have the ability to go a little later if they miss a, a thing or two on Pokemon Road. So. Iron does have uh, Grimer still planned. It is marked, but Iron's at 54 planned still. Oh, true. So, so you I could cut that. Tentacool and Grimer and still be fine. Yeah. And we're, um, on, we're, we're like almost, almost in the same frame here now. So, you know, right? we, we like a good synchronized race. And then yeah. we're going to see how terribly out of sync it gets on JJ3. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, this has been a really good race. Lots of back and forth so far. And that's with um, the memeing, so we'd love to see it. Right? 
like Matt evolving to Gyarados, which basically loses you 30 seconds um, on but top of go? getting the extra I guess Evo. it does. Yeah, because it's, you, it's two or three seconds of level up or whatever. Yeah. It's like 30 seconds just on the level ups that happened there. That's true, that's true. Worth it, TBH. Oh, true. Okay, so this is... Um, Basically, it's just the same fight that we did in Rocket Hideout, but they're one level higher, and we're maybe one level higher? Maybe? Um, so, it's a bad fight, uh, and it's worse than the other one. Um, I'm gonna wait just a second here to see what we're seeing. Okay, so Iron is going for the Puppy Strat, and we are gonna see Ryan Reynolds um, for Matt, uh, mm -hmm. and we're gonna basically use Glitzy Glow and the next special attack on the Eevee, and... Did not get the one shot on Arbok, um, but oh. it did paralyze, so that's kind of cool. Oh, this is um, actually really interesting because. Oh gosh. Uh, and on the a map got poisoned and down to two health. That's pretty rough. Yeah, on on Iron Side, uh, because we checked the Pika stats earlier, we know that plus four Thunderbolt will one shot the Weezing here. Oh, that's good. Um. The dog living here is not actually good. Uh, and there goes Eevee, I was gonna say. Uh, it says in the notes, just don't get unlucky. Uh, oh, we're getting some Gary Ariados action for the fans. Let's go! Um, this isn't gonna go well, just so we're clear. Uh, but this get Okay, yeah, we're just gonna switch to the Rhyhorn version of the fight now. Mm -hmm. And try to just drill run this wheezing into the ground. Yeah, the Gary, yeah. Gary is just gonna tank a hit for us. Oh my goodness, that crit almost killed. Yeah, unfortunately for Iron, the puppy living is bad because um, you want to be riding it through the next section, but you don't want it to get experience points because if you're going to evolve it, you're just going to uh, drop a Firestone on it. Um, right, so yeah. it's such low level that it's going to gain a bunch of levels from what you catch. So I guess the... The thing for Iron is to pray you see a Ponyta right away, party menu the Growlithe out of your party, and then go for the catch. Well, it looks like um, S Sandy said in chat, actually, Iron is going to be candying Pony. Uh, and I guess that's what maybe part of that plan is. Um, yeah. You, you have the pupper, you, you get a Pony, you candy it immediately so you can deposit this this little friendo. We, we love a good Arcanine, but we prefer it to be fainted. Yes. Uh, EP dogs only. Absolutely. Yeah. And, like, unfortunately, when you catch the pony, uh, you cannot ride it. You have to evolve it all the way into the haunts to be able to ride it. Right, um, yeah. Luckily, I forget, did Iron get the Route 6 rare candy, or did he just go straight for the pupper right away? Because I know he saw it off in the corner. It did go to Narnia. I do not remember. Hey, Iron, did you get the candy on Route 6? Just just wondering. Uh, either way, doesn't actually matter. There is, there are five candies. You you need four of them. Um or no, there are six candies. Uh you you need four of them and you can use a fifth one to evolve your haunts. Yep. Uh so it, it's not actually that big of a deal. The only concern I have for Iron is if Pony is not the first Pokemon to spawn, does he go for, like, a uh, duo? Does he go for uh, Pidge 2? Hmm, I think it depends. Yeah, well, let's get another shiny Relaxo. That would be pretty cool. Last year, um, right... Right around the same time of the tourney, Matt was doing AOP and found a shiny Snorlax that I think he rode for the rest of the game. Incredible. Uh, that was pretty pretty swag. I should learn AOP one of these days. Well, don't say that. Everyone's going to start, like, pushing you to do AOP and you're going to fall into a hole. <laughs> is the hole labeled 135 out of 135? Uh, I guess it is now. You know, that's fair. Alright, so Matt's gonna do um, another cool little skip. Um, what you're gonna do is you wanna despawn your mount. 
So you hug the wall and you actually use this Pokeball that's on the Outer World to despawn it, and then you can slide right past that trainer that's supposedly guarding the route. Um, that's pretty nice. Yeah, the other nice thing about this route is none of these trainers have eyeballs. Oh, instant pony for iron. Uh, does not get a chance to deposit uh, Arcanine before getting into catching. It uh, is glowing, but... too, so that might be not great. Yeah. In fact, it's an excellent. Well, let's hope so. God, can you imagine if this is... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> you were going to say it, and that's enough to make this Ponita... Um, Wombo. No, I think that was just normal. Was that just normal? I hope. Yeah, chat saying okay, that's just, just normal. normal. Okay, cool. I mean, that was enough to evolve um, Karate Kid and the Cub one, and and Rick Gastly too, actually. So that's nice. Yeah. Uh, Trubs evolving straight into the haunts. And we got a rapido on that screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, both of our runners in a really good spot. Uh, Iron's going to be here in the evolution screen for a hot minute. Yep. While uh, Trubs is doing a little bit of party menuing, a little bit of party management, uh, and gets back to the Pokemon hunting and... Well, frankly, the looting down this route, we're going to pick up an elixir, we're going to pick up a rare candy, we'll probably pick up some silver raspberries. We might even pick up the greatest tip of all, which is don't throw the game, throw Pokeballs instead. We'd love to see that tip. It's our favorite that we learned about last year's tourney. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for a Pidgey and a Doduo, though, um, as Trubs, so hopefully we do see that Pidgey. They're not, I think they're like 10% on this route? They're not, they're not a lot, super likely. Yeah. But the, the nice thing about Pidgey is, uh, similarly to the bugs, you get two Evos out of it if you catch them on this route. Unlike the bugs, it only needs one level each. So there is the Karate Kid leveling up for Matt. Now Matt's going to be on the evolution screen for a little while. Uh, Iron going for the Duduo uh, finds it not glowing. Um... Does want that, is still looking for a duck and um, Pidge 2 Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. uh, gets a great throw. Well, that's okay. This part of the run, we're not really looking for experience. We don't have our main in the party, so we're just trying to get like some evolutions in the last couple of catches we'll need for the game. Yeah. Um, we actually do have use. We're going to be riding the, the 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 rapid pony, and we're going to be utilizing this duo duo um, in possibly a battle, depending on who you are. Yeah, like we'll we'll definitely uh, see a little more use out of the tribird after duo duo evolves. Yeah, yeah, and we might even see um, some 2C strats that involve this duck, um, if it ever does show up for either of our runners. Mm -hmm. Come on, we want a big yellow duck and we want a pitch. Uh, that's a pony. Come on, game. That's a different kind of bird. Um, hello? Oh, Matt's actually going to lure, um, sorry, repel and lure. Um, we really want the you stupid Pokemon to show up. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, you you have the repel there for circumstances like this. Now seems as good a time as any to use it. And Unfortunate this... that the catch chain is definitely. Oh my god, there's so many Doduo here. Jeez. And an Eevee. Avoy. There's, there's a duck. A duck. Uh, Iron picking up the rare candy. Um, at this point, Iron could leave this route if he doesn't see anything else spawn. Uh, sees an avoy on his side, but sees the duck. 
Um, if I'm iron, I catch the duck, I say no thank you, Pidge, and I skip Tenta, grab Grimer, and call it a day. That might be the call. Um, I'm looking at what Matt's done to his tracker as well, um, and has unmarked the entire Pidgey line. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at catching a rat, a coughing, and something else. Um, hasn't marked nine tails, so maybe we'll evolve the Vulpix. Yeah, because there is a Firestone that is easily accessible inside the Pokemon Mansion. Yeah, that should get you to 50, um, and that would be totally fine. Or maybe we'll swag and go for uh, the Boober. Mm-hmm. Both of our runners going through uh, uh, short-sighted uh, trainers anonymous. Maybe some glasses uh, would be good for Kanto. Mm -hmm. Just in general. Uh, now we're in this cutscene, uh, which is long, and you can't skip it. Uh, King Trubs getting a kicked by Koga time. All um, right. I wasn't expecting that, but here we are. Uh, don't forget your teeth. Great, we got kicked by Koga time and a ditch build time in this race. We're just going for the trifecta. Oh, we are getting, that's Omega early teeth. That is yeah. like, that is incredibly early teeth. I guess if you're coming down this way just to uh, to get by kicked by Koga, you might as well pick up the teeth anyway, since you're here. I I guess so, yeah. Now we're gonna go get Sea Skim for, for Matt after we've gotten all this, and let's not forget later that that, that Matt already has the teeth. So mm -hmm. if Iron does later early teeth, it doesn't matter because King Trubs did go back in time and get them before you started the game teeth. What was up with that police box, anyway? Who knows? Um, but at this point, now we get to play everyone's favorite scam roulette. You How good's the star? Uh, the, the CP is a scam, it's true. Mm -hmm. It'd be funny if Matt caught a Pidgey or a Tangelina, uh, Jolie, when we go looking for our star. There's a Tangela! Iron, what yeah. are you doing? Go back. Oh, there's a star, though, okay. Yeah, we, we do love a good star. And we've got uh, 1034. So I wouldn't necessarily call this good, but also we don't know if it's bad yet, yet either. So we'll, you know, we'll yep. take it. Seeing quite a number of 1034s this tournament, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is below average overall stats. See, Iron, um, that's why you gotta get the excellent. Well, great's better than nothing, I guess. Indeed. That's okay, Matt. Uh, Matt. Iron only has one more catch, and it's the Grimer, so... Yep. Both of our runners in very good spots to finish this run out. Uh, their runs out. Yeah. Matt's yeah. count looks a little low, but we can fix this. Either we're hoping for a bird right here, or a Tangelina would be cool. Oh, there's a Tangelina. Uh, not, not worth. Not going for it. Well, to be fair, I don't think Matt picked up any extra Ultra Balls whatsoever, so mm -hmm. I don't hate that. Um, I don't even know... I don't know what he does here. Maybe he goes for a Tenta, that would also fix this? Because he's at 49 mm -hmm. marked at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so I don't hate the idea of going for a Tenta here. Uh, oh, there's a star next to that spinner that's off. Oh, there's two. Great, perfect. If this one's bad, we'll just go get the other one. Yeah. I do think the easiest fix for Matt would be just to fire stone the full picks. I think you're right. Because um, he's already locked into catching coughing, and we don't love coughing as EV runners. Mm -hmm. um, I did not pay attention to Iron uh, leveling up the star. Uh, but in chat, Iron, smile. Iron says it's trash, so that's fun. Let's, Let's see what the stats look call. like. Oh, so the speed is okay, but the special attack is 113 at, at Teaching Scald, so that's kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so he is gonna go for that tentacle, which I don't, I don't hate that. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'm always saying, you know, uh, Pokemon in your Pokeball is worth two of the tall grass. True. A very common saying, many, many times quoted over. For sure, for sure. Got the tentacle nice and easy, so only one more catch for Matt. Uh, and then we'll see what his star looks like. Uh, I'm hoping good. It'd be nice for it to be good. Um, mm -hmm. Irons is not great, but at least it's got enough speed to do the job. Yep. There's two main thresholds we're looking for from our stars. Uh, the first one is, in terms of speed, is we just need it to be fast enough to get over, you know, most of the threats we're about to run across. One of the first big speed checks we have going on is actually on the Blaine fight, um, where the Rabidash has a speed stat of 118, and you really, really don't want to have to worry about getting over that. Very true. Let's and let's the star see the star. Stats. This star is okay. Uh, it's got enough speed. It's got a decent amount of special attack. I can't hate that star. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, oh, he, I see that Matt is a boomer and has the different move order than is in the, the beginner and advanced notes. <laughs> yeah, like, I do not hate 89 special attack on Star U at 46. No, that's pretty okay. And the speed is enough to get you through what you need, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Looks like um, Iron got kind of unlucky and ended up taking damage on the Star Me here. Um, so I think Iron will probably want to bed heal. Um, which is fine. Yeah. I know that there's... It says in the notes that if your star is good enough, you want to uh, heal it in battle rather than bed healing. Oh, okay. But I I honestly don't know what's better. Well, that took a while, but there's Iron's Grimer. Um, mm -hmm. And then once we're done on the menu here for Trubs, which is just finishing, we're going to go for... Um, there it is, a coughing. And that coughing should be the last Pokemon we actually catch uh, for both of our runners. Like, we've got a couple of Evos, we've got a couple of gift Pokemon, but we aren't throwing any more Pokeballs at things. As long as this gets in. After it gets in. It got in. We're good. Okay, great. Now I can close this tracker. Woo! Cool. All right, now we're just going to go through the star part of the game. Um, now that all the catching is done, it, this feels a lot more like a normal Pokemon speedrun. Uh, we're going to be looking at ranges, we're going to be looking at all the RNG that comes with all these fights, uh, and we're going to be um, just having a grand old time steamrolling gyms that are way too weak for our new main. <laughs> Yeah, uh, part of the reason the star stats can be so variable is because, unlike with our actual starter, uh, the Bika or the Evoy, um, you know, the star you we catch follows all the standard Pokemon stat spreads, you know, 0 to 31 randomly in each stat for IVs. Uh, nature, though, we did fix back in Celadon City, so we know these stars are modest. Yes, and that is really useful. I'm, I feel like you can kind of get around without it, but this just makes everything much more consistent for running. Uh, and we'll take that. Yeah, any sort of variance that you can take out of your speed run, the better. Absolutely. We prefer to have our ranges not be ranges. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Trump, Matt got the fight that I'm used to for Ted, where Do Duo gets knocked out, um, and I feel like there's a couple of ways to deal with this. I think he'll want to bed heal though, because I noticed he doesn't have any rare candies yet, right now, mm. rather not yet. Oh no, I guess there's a Lapras rare candy. I always forget about that one. It's because I just automatically pick it up every time. I just forget about it. That is super fair. 
Oh yes, Matt's gonna go for another rat. Um, although it would be really nice if before we left this mansion we'd see a shiny because this is like the last place we can see a shiny. Yeah, because after this we're gonna be running around either in towns or with repels up. Yep, and then there will be no more shinies in this speedrun. Um, not that there have been any so far, but it would, <laughs> that magmar is on a warpath. It's great. Yeah, on Ironside, got the turn one confused. Oh, Matt. Did not oh. get turned. Oh, Matt took a spinner a little bit riskier than I would have. Awkward. I saw that, but, you know. Ugh. If if it works, it works, I guess. Jeez. But yeah, both of her brothers taking the bed heel. Uh, Matt even Matt, took it twice. Yeah, Matt picking up the max elixir because uh, the EV side does not pick up the ether back on Route 25. No, we don't. Um, makes it a little bit less... Because uh, I feel like there's always that moment in a Pikachu runner's heart where they're like, don't ether the wrong move. Can I tell you how it feels when you do, in fact, ether the wrong move. Oh, no. Because I've done it before. Uh, as an Eevee runner, this is not a problem I have. So, you know that feeling in your heart you get when your star gets crit in the Elite Four? Yeah. This feels worse. Oh, dear. Because <laughs> it's something you can prevent? Yep. Because it is a mistake you made, rather than the game just being like, nah. Yep, for sure. Uh, while chat argues about the benefits of sleep, um, we're gonna fight Blaine, uh, get our third gym badge, and then go to those gyms that we've been kind of, like, putting off. Not trying, like, kind of ignoring. Yeah, you remember what, all the way back when we got off the SSAM, there was the guy there being like, Hey, come over here! Yeah, we're going to finally follow up on that guy. Yep, that guy's been waiting for us for like an hour and a half almost. Unrelated. It'd be nice if I could close that. Wow, well, what's up? You want to know what Pokemon game I've always wanted? Which one? Um, The Pokemon Gym Management Game. I know that yeah. there is, like, a fan game for that. I haven't tried it yet, but... That like, does all... appeal to me, honestly, as... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sh I am feel like a lot of people who liked Pokemon as kids were like, oh, gym leaders are so cool, I wanted to be a gym leader, because you always have yeah. that one type of Pokemon that you really like. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always, you know, really liked all the weird gym puzzles going on, you know? Like, for yeah. instance... Uh, Surge's cans, which are, are deterministic, a, are a logic puzzle of this one. You beat the trainers and you get clues to where the switches are. Yep, that, and it's much better than the randomness that happened in the regular game. Sorry, the original and Fire Red Leaf Green. Yeah. Uh, so now we're in the part of the run where not a lot happens and we try to fill air so we don't get DMCA'd. So, uh, yep. hey, what chat and YouTube comments and Leggy, let us know what your favorite type of Pokemon is. Yeah, so I have a couple of favorites. Um, like, obviously, you know, I'm a Gen 1 boomer, so I still think Psychic should be overpowered. Um, right. Steel appeals to me, flying appeals to me, water appeals to me. Um, I'm queer, so obviously I have to say fairy. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm queer, but I'm I'm just I'm queer in the way that like I like poison types. Hell yeah, love this for you. <laughs> I, I'm I'm the uh, goth girl queer. Uh, <laughs> so I well I like poison types. I like dark types. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, when I when I was younger, definitely water types were really up there for me. Um, but then they started like making water types less and less good, and I was just right? like, oh, I, I don't love this. I liked when water types were bulky and fun. Now I don't like this so much anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, what's your favorite like 
gym puzzle you've seen in a Pokemon game. Like, the thing Ooh. you do when you are inside the gym before you fight the gym later. I have to think on this one, because there's only been nine different games. Right? Um, okay, so... Gen... Okay, I'm gonna just do it by Gen, because we have a lot of time to fill. So Gen 1, um, I was a big... Oh Did no! You... Matt, no! Matt. Oh no, was that Drift? Because it looked like he just straight up talked to that guy. Yeah, like he was pointed at the trash can, and then the character just slid. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so, so, it says it was a misinputted chat. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Luckily, uh, this is the least bad of them. It's only a true, one yeah. Magnemite. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of time loss, but, you know, it's not the worst, because we have an overpowered star. Um, yeah, and we've got a full heal coming soon. Yeah, so not so bad. Okay. Um, could have been worse, so let me think about this. So my first, so Gen 1, de honestly, I'm a big fan of the Blaine puzzle. I mm -hmm. thought that was kind of cool, that you could, like, skip the trainers if you got your trivia right. Um, yeah. Gen 2, they're, they're kind of lame, if I'm being honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think my favorite's just, like, the second gym, because it's, it does something different, which is, like, the double fight. Fair. Uh, Gen 3, um, I really like, um, honestly, I do kind of like the ice puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, it's not as good an ORAS in my opinion, because they made it, like, more complicated. But mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it in the original, um, Ruby Sapphire Emerald. Um, Gen 4, uh, Gardenia's gem. Mm-hmm. Gen 5, um, existed. Um, no, I Eric, think my Eric. favorite, my favorite was, it's not in the original one, it's in Ultra, it's in Black and White 2. Uh, oh, what's her name? Roxanne? Her gym is rad. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, very rad. I love that it's just, like, the, the rock star gym. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, Gen 6 had some, on, okay, the roller skating gym, I think. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, no, that one was a good one. Yeah, that one's pretty pretty sweet. Um, I I will never say an ice type gym is my favorite because they all have really terrible puzzles. I'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. to you. Um, okay, so then Gen Seven didn't really have gyms, so I'm gonna skip mm -hmm. that. Gen Eight, um, oh the fairy gym, for sure. I thought that was cute. I thought that the the quizzes were really cute. I just like puzzles, I guess. As a theater um, kid, that one spoke to me. Yeah, me too. I'm also a theater kid. <laughs> uh, turns out, Leggy and I are learning that we have so much in common. Um, right. And then Gen 9, Larry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like, the, 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 the puzzle for the Secret Order was great. I will give yeah. honorable mention to Olive Rolling. I won't, because I had a heck of a time with it. You know, that is fair. The Sunflora one was honestly cool, and it would have been better if it actually, like, functioned yeah. in, like, more than five frames. That yeah. was cute, but it wasn't It wasn't my favorite. So I think my favorite gem puzzle? Man, I think it might just be, um, it might, it might just be the Fairy Gym in Sword and Shield, actually. That is fair and understandable. Yeah, tell me about um, yours. Yeah, so I have a special place in my heart for, gosh, Gen 1, I I hate to say it, I love the teleporter maze, It it's so silly, but I don't know, I just like it. Uh, Gen 2, I have to give it to Chuck for making me use strength inside his gym. <laughs> okay, fair. Um... And that's why Erica is my second favorite Kanto. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Gen 3, uh, the gym that immediately springs to mind for me is either uh, the Flying Gym or the Fire yep. Gym. I almost said the Flying Gym because I also mm -hmm. like that one a lot. Yeah. Gen 4, gosh. The I don't even gym. remember. I forget her name. The go oh, Fantina's gym. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I I I, I, I love my quizzes. Yes, that was a good one. Yeah, Gen um, five and six definitely happened. They did. 
Um, the only one I remember from those is, like, the one bug gym where you're, like, crawling on the spider webs. See, I remember that one, I didn't like it. Fair. I just remember... <laughs> I, I don't remember doing the puzzle, I just remember the aesthetic. Right, right. Uh, Gen 7 obviously didn't really have gyms. Yep. Gen 8... I thought the... Uh... What was it? The fifth gym? The first one that could be one of two types. It was fighting and sword. Oh, um, the gym in the teacups. Yeah, I thought that was cute, but it's not my favorite. I think mm -hmm. my favorite there has to go to um, the fire gym, Kabu's gym, be just because That's a fun of. One. Yeah, like, okay, you're catching the Pokemon, but you're also competing against your technical doubles partner. I thought it was just such a really neat iteration on the double fight mechanic. Mm -hmm, yeah. No, I agree. Um, that was a really fun gym, and it breaks up a lot of the gym formulas that we've seen previously. What about Gen 9? Um, it has to be hilarious. Like, That's it, totally I, fair. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I wanted to try and pick different ones than what you said throughout, but no. <laughs> there, there's no contest. Yeah, so overall then, what's your favorite? I think I still have to hand it to Kabu. Like, That's fair, sub yeah. subverting a common game mechanic uh, as someone who really likes game design as like an art form really speaks to me. So what we're learning today is that Gen 8 had really fun gyms, except for the Melanie and her son's gym. Not, not, not fun. Yup. Perfect. Okay, so we've actually perfectly filled um, time up until something interesting happened. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're about to go and fight Archer 2, uh, which is known f as probably the worst fight in the game, because this is a true double fight. Um, and everything sucks, and we just want to get through it as fast as possible. Uh, that, Of course, that's what we want in speedruns, but it's also just so risky that the fastest way is also the safest way. So yep. we're hoping to see um, no protect from this mook that is going to start out the fight, and then Electrode, uh, we hope that it booms turn one. Uh, so yeah. fingers crossed for Iron here. Yeah, because unfortunately, since we're paired up with an AI partner, um, we can't do a lot of the strats we have been doing in double fights, where we just have our primary Pokémon do an attack, and the other one fill them up with delicious, delicious X uh, boosting items. Um, yeah. The Cub one here can do a couple of different things. Ideally, we see it using uh, Bone Barang on various targets so that we can hopefully whittle them down while we focus on other things. So it wasn't optimal, but we got Thunderbolts with no extra effects uh, and Bone Meringue from the Cub one on the Electrode. Um, so we have to heal here, unfortunately, but hopefully it... Yeah, there it goes. It booms this time. Um, so hopefully uh, we can get through this without too much trouble, especially if Cub One gets a nice hit here with the Bone Meringue. Yep, there goes the Radicate. So that's this is a this is a fine fight. It started out looking a little dicey, but we're gonna be okay. Yeah, this is the scary version of the four turn fight. Um, but we take it. Um, as it it's turns scary, out, it's solid. Yeah. Yeah, someone did the math, and it. Uh, boom into Boomerang is like a 99 point something percent chance to knock out the Raticate. Yes, and Chad actually jinxed um, Iron there getting a protect from the Weezing to make this a five turn fight. Uh, so thanks, Razor. Uh, and also, I'm pretty sure it was Iron that did that calculation, Leggy. Um, mm. And I believe the odds are the same as a Gen 1 miss, which is kind of funny. Amazing. Uh, so I'm like, oh, so it's literally a Gen 1 miss. Uh, good job. <laughs> yeah, over on that side, uh, on the blue fight, the fight right before Archer 2, uh, going with the Dodrio strats, uh, which are more consistent, though a little slower since you do have to menu Dodrio into the second slot. Yeah, we were too busy about talking about Galar's gems, uh, but this is also the fight that Iron did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it is definitely safer than using uh, your haunts, but it is, you know, it, if you set your menus up, it's probably identical.
All right, so Iron is through Archer 2, which is probably a sigh of relief, even though it was five turns. It was, it was like four, four and a half turns. It wasn't so bad. Could have been a lot worse. Uh, now we're going to hope that Matt gets the same or better, um, because we love to see a tight race and we love to see things not go horribly wrong when it comes to luck. Um, so now we have Iron moving up to the next JJ fight, and this one is a bit of a cakewalk compared to the other ones that we've seen. And that's kind of a nice, refreshing change of pace. Yeah. As it turns out, uh, Starmy using Psychic, pretty okay. Yeah. Turns out when you're a Psychic type and you use Psychic, that's pretty good. Mm hmm Okay, um, I give my cat a headbutt real quick, and come back up, and it's still going. No protect boom from uh, Matt's side, so... Oh, we love to see it, okay. This is setting up for the three turn. Well, we can hope. We, uh, the three turn yes. is the ideal, so that'd be yeah. nice. Yeah, it's by no means guaranteed, but you have to have this opening if you want the three turn fight. I didn't see if Cube on focus energy, but if he did, then, you know, it, it's likely that we could see it. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Um, I'm looking for my cat, because he's probably going to come wanting food soon. Um, but he's not here yet, and if he comes up asking for food, you might get to hear him. That'd be funny. All right, here comes Bulbat. This is uh, looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. I like to see this this fight because it's nice and clean. We do get a free heal after this, so we're not worried about taking a bit of damage. Sucker punch on the Cubone, so we know it's attacking. Coffee leveled up. Oh, bone meringue. Yo! Let's go! We got the three turn? Incredible! Go, Trubs, go! Also, believers in the prediction, uh, that's a lot of points that just went on the line. I think that was all of Spider's? Sorry, Spider. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, we love to see uh, seven-turn archer fights across two runners. Yeah, that's, that's okay. So Matt just needs one more Pokemon, and I believe it's just the Nine Tails. Uh, that would make sense. Um, let me pull up the tracker again real quick. Oh, uh, looks ah, uh, looks like we're evolving Tentacool. Oh, that makes sense too. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine, and that should definitely happen before we finish up Sabrina. Yes. So both of our runners uh, locked in, ready to go. You love to see it, uh, mostly because you don't. We already saw one kicked by Koga. Um, it was, yeah. it was. Oh yeah! By the way, Matt already has teeth, so you know. Yep. O Omega, Omega, early teeth, and Alpha Sapphire. Uh, Wall Raid wants to know your location. That's nah, okay. I, I don't mind the. Uh, a walrus every once in a while. I like Metacham. <laughs> I'm the one person who is like, listen to me, the Pokemon speedruns community. Metacham is good, okay? If it ever showed up in a place that was useful, I'd say we should use it. You know, that is fair. Um, but Iron is done with the self co going to go downstairs. Uh, teleport out, uh, gonna pick up the Lapras and the Candy, gonna go all the way down to the ground floor, pick up the Porygon, and then we're off to Sabrina. Yeah, we're gonna see a Perigno. And of course, Larpus. Uh, I guess this could be Larpus. shiny. This could be technically shiny as well. Um, mm -hmm. oh, the, did, did Dodrio die? I guess Weezing must have gone for Thunderbolt on Dodrio. Hang on. Did Matt... Did... 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 Got crit. Okay. That that would check out. Yeah, but isn't it... Why was it at part... 
Why was it at low damage? Oh, I okay, probably because the drill tech happened or whatever. That's so strange. Mm -hmm. You know what? That'll happen though. Um, I guess you don't need that Dodrio for anything else. Yeah, like Dodrio, you've served your purpose. We salute you and your sacrifice. <laughs> Goodbye, uh, sweet prince. Uh, it was nice knowing you. Now we have this cruel mistress, just like fate on screen. Mm -hmm. Hey, we could use that if we wanted to see the Elite Four. Um, we'll talk about that when we get there. And uh, meanwhile, Iron is getting Perigno. It's just a normal one, it's not shiny. Off and up to do, hopefully, the last shopping trip of the run on Iron's side. We can hope. All right, let's have a look here and see what we're picking up. We got max repels. We've got X speeds, which we'll need for a couple of fights coming up here. Yeah, this uh, looks we like we're getting the... expedefs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's telling because it means that Iron is planning to go for the one C strats. Um, it doesn't mean that he's locked into them, but it does mean that the option is available. Um, 1C is, of course, the faster strat to go through E4 with. Um, 2C is safer, um, but is a chance for your opponent to catch up uh, in the late game. Um, we're seeing we're seeing I Iron pull ahead of Trubs by a fair amount right now, um, but there's still a couple of deciding fights to go through, so this is by no means over just yet. Yeah, and Iron does have the X-Defend that he bought much, much, much earlier in the run, so he is fully set up to go for 1C strats for the rest of the run, if he wants to. Yes, and I believe Iron actually said that if it wasn't for that earlier JJ fight, um, he'd be on PB pace. So this is a pretty decent run. Yeah. I don't know where he is compared to PB now. Um, probably a little behind, but this is still solid. Um, now, that, of course, the question is going to be what we think the median time for this round is going to be. And mm -hmm. now that we've only got 19 competitors, um, where the previous rounds were in like the 309 range, which is fast by itself, by the way. Um, we might be seeing something like maybe closer to 306 or 307 as median time. Yeah, because, you know, unfortunately, uh, we did do a bit of a cut to save on re uh, resourcing going into the final round of the Swiss. Um. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, especially depending on where our runners sit, because as previously mentioned, in a two-player race, the first place person will get either three or two points, depending on whether or not they're faster than the median. Second place will get one or zero, depending on the same factor. And I believe both of these runners are on four points, is that right? That sounds right. Okay, so um, th th there were some... Outside ways that people with seven points could make it into the semifinals, there is a chance. Uh, it's not a great chance, but you know, if if they want it, they have to play for it uh, pretty hard. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to go very fast, and they're going to need some other people to go very slow. Yep. Like, and um, part part of it might come down to you know, if say a runner in one of the upper brackets gets really unlucky, goes for a risky strat and gets punished for it, has its safety saved in a while, um, that could affect things. Very much, yeah. Um, this is the round where every race that is completed does affect the median time. So it's not one where I'd say, well, it's not one where I hope to see a lot of DNFs. I actually hope mm -hmm. to see no DNFs um, because that just makes things more interesting. Uh, if we do see them, I'm not going to be, like, mad or anything, but it would be would be, be good to see everybody finish. We got a real close-up on Slowbro there, and it kind of kind of jump-scared me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, re regardless, like, every single race in this final round of Swiss is going to be hype as all get out. You do oh, yeah. not want to miss any of them. No, if hopefully you don't miss any of them. I feel like I can at least watch all of them. I have to pull them up on my schedule because we're not on that part of the run yet where we can pull it up on screen. Mm -hmm. um, these are all, yeah, these are all ones that I can probably watch most of. 
so far. Um, it, it, even though I'll just have them on on the side at work. Um, but yeah, I think I, really, I can probably watch all of these, and hopefully you can too. Sorry to any of those in, in the Europe time zones. It makes things a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Though, uh, Race 5 is probably... Race 1 and 5 are probably both pretty good for European time zones, That's as they're true, actually. morning uh, US. Yeah, I'm going to be waking up when one of them starts. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, I am in mountain time. And that means that it's much earlier for me than it is in the eastern time zone, where a lot of people tend to live. Like me! Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's it's nice over here in the mountain time mm -hmm. zone. I live near the mountains. Yeah, like, I moved out here a few years back from California. Oh, cool. Okay. So it's weird going from being, like, the person in the in the online marathon who can handle the late night shifts because I'm up three hours later than everyone. Yeah. Um, I actually am also from um, the Eastern time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I moved here when I was six. So I'm basically mm -hmm. actually from here now. Yeah. Like, oh, that I... counts as from there. And right on cue, my cat does appear and ask me for dinner. <laughs> uh... While we were chattering about real life, in the more important world of Pokemon, Iron did not get kicked by Koga. We only had one kick by Koga today. Excellent. I'm glad we only had one, and we'll probably get through it later. Uh, did we see if Iron picked up the teeth? I did not. Well, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, now we're yeah. fighting Caden, um, also known as Furious's best friend. Um, <laughs> spent, probably the runner that spent the most time fighting Caden. Uh, but that's okay. We're gonna just X special attack here, and oh, turn one protect. He'll love to see it. That means that this will go through no problem. Yep. Uh, I don't think the... Like, under what circumstances are trainers able to go for double protect? They do, but I don't think it's as, like, confirmed as a protect is, because, um, not in this game, but in, like, other games we'll see that if you have protect, they go for it most of the time on turn one. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it seems so random in Let's Go. Um, yeah. Based on all the times we've seen Caden just be Caden. Yep. But Iron gets through with a optimal Caden fight, takes three turns. Yeah. Um, a question in chat about how the stars are today. Um, Iron has a star with decent speed and not great special attack. Uh, and Trubs or Matt has a really good star. Uh, no complaints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's good. And we're going into Koga, which um, isn't super spooky, but can be really trolly. Um, every Pokemon that Koga no has knows Protect. And as we mentioned, they like to use Protect. Um, We've got low special attack on Iron, which means he's going to have to go for Psychic on a lot of these Pokémon. Uh, so the less Protects we see, the better, because we need our Psychics. Because we're not really trying to use another Pokémon Center for the rest of the run, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need those Psychics to kill a couple Pokémon on Victory Road. Yeah. L luckily, we get the opening Protect from Weezing, so the first Psychic connects no issue. Fantastic. Um, did Iron already use his Elixir, though? I did not see. Um, we'll have yeah. to find out. Because at least uh, for my money, um, I like you. I like saving the elixir until after Koga. I know it's slightly less optimal, but it prevents a lot of the trollage that could happen if Koga goes awry. Wow, Matt has 131 special attack. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are 10 special attack different from each other. <laughs> yep, uh, Irons is not great. Yep. Oh my goodness, my poor cat is so persistent. I will go feed you after Koga, okay, Scooby? <laughs> uh, I can hear those meows. You can? Oh, perfect. Yes. I was worried that Stream wouldn't be able to hear Kane when he's asking for food. Yep. yep, he's a character. Okay, uh, come on. Let's go get this bud fe uh, fed. You entertain the people with the Caden and Koga. Sounds good. Uh, Matt, not kicked by Koga this time. Iron picking up teeth. Did not do it earlier. 
So let's go see what Matt's uh, cannon fight's going to be like. As previously mentioned, you do need to set up a X special attack, and then uh, ideally it's uh, two attacks from there to clean this fight up rather nicely. So let's see what comes up. Uh, the other thing to think about... Oh, that's a Minimize from Caden's Monk. That could be scary. There's a Protect. We're one turn down. There's an Avoidance. Moonblast, but no special attack drop. Another Avoidance. Oh, and the special attack drop! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, God! Ah, uh, Matt summoning the the rabbit ash so that he could use a hyper potion while still attacking with the starmy. Finally, a connection. The muck is down. Uh, we do have to psych for the beedrill since we're at only plus one special attack, but we're through. We can I, all I, breathe. I see there was a fight that happened when I was away. Uh, turn one, minimize. You love, you hate to see it, is what you hate, so that's yep. fun. Uh, we're having to pump the Beedrill uh, to keep our <laughs> psychic count up. We lied. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, but we're through. Mmm. <sighs> Matt briefly contemplating an elixir there, but decided, nah, we don't need it. Yeah. If it came that bad, you know, how bad could Koga be? Haha. Ha ha, ha, -ha. yeah. Um, I, I missed it, but did um did Trub's result resort to uh, my favorite stomp strats? Uh looked like, but hit with the psychic the same turn uh he went for stomp. Okay, cool. So not not too too much lost. J just a little scary. Yeah, uh, definitely got the star all the way down uh, to the point where he needed to summon the po pony to, to yeah. see out a heal. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, you hate to see it, but sometimes it happens. But yep. yeah, here we are, at least. Um, yeah. No no major problems yet. We, we've we seen a ditch bill and a kick by Koga. We unfortunately didn't get to ride a Kangaskhan or an Onyx. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're getting toxic on uh, the Wii's, which is great. And we're entering Giovanni's gym for iron, uh, which is nice. Blast, gym of the run, only three more gym related fights. And then we're gonna start moving towards victory road, which means we're almost done this speed run. Let's go. That is the name of the game. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are some interesting things Iron can go for here, um, but with a star of this particular quality, I'm not sure you want to go for anything risky. For Iron, you think? Yeah, for Iron. Hydro Pump is guaranteed at this point, though. If he's, uh... No, not quite. Hydro Pump is a 15-16. I thought he had leveled. My bad. Hmm. Uh, so we could see a Risky Samuel fight. I'm curious to know how this is going versus Iron's PB. Um, because if I was Iron and I wasn't close to PB, I'd consider a decent amount of 2C strats, strats mm -hmm. as it were. Um, Giovanni... Uh, is pretty pretty risky. Uh, yeah. So I'd I'd like to see. He's probably got decently low defense because he was a low CP. Mm -hmm. um, ah, Iron is saying that this is three hundred five pace if if he one sees. And um, with that in mind, I think you have to full send if only to do what you can to protect your tournament life. Because, yeah, I think you do. You know. If you full send and make it, um, you get the best odds of being 
uh, below the median. I think, um, because if you if you two C, you're probably looking at three o six, if not slower. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think three o five, three o five, I think is a chance of being above the median. So I think, yeah, if I was iron, I'd have to go for it. Yeah. Like, that is just right on that line. Yeah, I think this is the only way Iron has a chance of advancing, is if you full send, if you 1C, and if you just go for it knowing that you don't have a great star. So he's going to have to mm -hmm. plus 6 Lorelei, um, plus 6 Champ, um, do a few Psychics. Um, too bad we didn't pick up the Max Elixir, haha. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate going for the 2C Giovanni. Uh, this is honestly not that much slower. Um, because odds are good that even even if you 1C it, you still have to heal outside of battle. Yeah, so this isn't this isn't the worst thing. Um, we obviously prefer if Rapidash dies here. Uh, and it did. Easy. Great. Good. We love to see it. Yeah, so this is basically the optimal 2C Giovanni fight, because it is no longer a 2C fight. Yep, and that's pretty good. And I think this HP, you don't have to heal for Rival? Um... I think? What 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 was the number? Oh Eight yeah, six. you were more than good enough. Yeah, my notes just say to heal, but I'm using like a beginner intermediate set of notes, so I should probably update these. Yeah, like with your low, with the lowest possible defense, you're taking like 27 at a max roll. Oh, okay, yeah, not not a big deal. Yeah. All right, cleaning up Giovanni. That's nice. Uh, Matt's Evie looking at some roses as we go back up to Palette here. <laughs> Um, we, we tail slap the Pika, and mm -hmm. we are ready to go and fight Rival 5. Um, this is another fight where we have to 2C, because it's just a really awkward fight if we don't. Um, there's some really dangerous Pokémon for us. There's a, um, a Vile Plume or a Vila Plume, uh, that knows pe um, Petal Dance. Uh, it learns Solar Beam between now and the, um, the Elite Four, uh, so it becomes easier on that fight than it does in this fight. Quite honestly, uh, so we're we're kind of forced to do some fancy two C work, um, where there's like a a tree of what you're supposed to do depending on who it comes out when. But regardless, you always X speed on turn two. Uh, that yep. is not negotiable. And to answer the question in chat, Vila Plume, y'all know yeah. that Pokemon. Yeah, Vila Plume. Um, somebody caught one earlier in the tournament. I think it might have been Iron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those joining us late, in honor of Matt being in the race, we're mispronouncing as many Pokemon names as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Iron going for uh, the 2C strat, the classic strat, like... World record 2Cs this fight. There oh, yeah, is it's hard. no reason to 1C it. It is just infinitely too risky. <laughs> Um, there is some talk about bringing back 1C to run from a couple of the runners that are in the tournament currently, and I remember they looked at this fight and said, okay, you have to, like, X special defend, and, you know, like, alternate between healing and buffing yourself, and it just looks like a mess, and I'm glad that I don't have to do that with 2C. Same! There's the Vila Plume. Yep. Yeah. And thankfully, yeah, there's the X speed. Uh, so we didn't mess that part up. That's good. And on the other team. side, uh, Matt has cleaned up the Karate King. I'm oh, going to go into the Geo fight. And 2C, you said? Um, I... Or is it a 1 I'm not fight? sure. Okay, we'll find out. Let's find out together. Mm-hmm.
A one right, C. Like, one C. Okay. Well, um, this star is significantly better CP wise than Iron's, so the defense is probably good enough. Also, this is all the stuff we just want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if one side's got to do two C, the other one's got to do one C, so we can see all of the stuff. Yeah, we've got to use the X defense yep. turn turn one there. Um, that's yeah. not bad damage, actually. Yep. Uh, you get the X special attack off, and you just pray you don't get crit this turn. See, we're fine. Easy. The only fast Pokemon in this fight was indeed the Dugdrio, so we should be safely through Giovanni. We will need to heal outside of battle here, but that's okay. Let's see what our stats look like when we're through here, while Iron just talks to a bunch of guards who are badge checking. Also, thank you to everyone in the Discord that is just sharing cat photos. Uh, if you want to just keep doing that, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I have is, do we think Iron's going to 1C Naomi? Uh, so... I don't think so. I hope um, not. The Hydra Pump range is not good. Um, do we know what his special attack stat is right now? Last time we checked, it was 121, so I'm guessing it's in the 124, 125 range. Yeah, that's like... 9 out of 16 on average. Okay, that's not good. And that's, you know, after you hit the 80%. Oh, Matt might not be healing going into Rival 5. Yep. I was looking at those numbers myself. Uh, the max roll, the 1 in 16 damage range for his 106 defense is 24 damage. So 15 and 16 to live the quick attack. I mean, those are pretty good odds. So at that and... point, you know, it's... You have to factor in the crit because that significantly updates the odds. Yeah, but that's like four seconds or more that you would be healing your Starmie on. Yeah. Alright, we had the 2C for Iron. I think his Rapidash died. Yeah, it did. Okay. That's okay. We don't need it until we get the free heal in Victory Road. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's only, like, one fight between here and the heal. Yeah, and I think it's, like, it doesn't involve the Rapidash at all. Uh, yep. Otherwise, we'd worry about it, but no, it's fine. And we got a good cycle on that spinner there, too, which is good. Didn't even use Quick Attack. Game's easy. Wow. I'm honestly shocked. Apparently, but... this thing is tanky, and the AI didn't pre-calc that it would kill, so they went for something else. Yeah. I still have no idea how this game's AI even works. I... I'm not convinced it does, but I... hey. I mean, it might not, because, like, if it was... We would expect to see certain things if it works like the infamous Emerald AI did. Yep. And it's not doing that, so... What's going on? All right, uh, oh, look, uh, we're asleep. Honk shoe, honk shoe. Honk shoe, indeed. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> All right, through the hypno. Uh, Slowbro is just a thunderbolt, and you're done. Don't misclick that, by the way. That's not great. Not any slow bro, to be honest. Yeah, every slow bro is just like, let's just not misclick, please. Yes, slow bro, the, the mashing defender. Yeah, don't just mash A or use your turbo. You have to actually click buttons. <laughs> uh, Matt, going through the badge check as Iron goes through... My favorite puzzle in Victory Road. Was that in air quotes? So, so many air quotes. 
Gotcha. Um, for me, I really don't like the one where you have to push a block 20 times. I think that that's bad game design. Oh, same. Uh, I just... At least it's easy. You just keep pushing it from the one direction. This one, I constantly feel like I'm going to be slightly off. Push it uh, just off enough that it thinks I'm pushing oh. it from a different direction. Yeah. I'm definitely pretty careful with my bouldering. Yeah. It's important. Safety first. Yeah, always gotta be safe. Like that. Alexa safe, never. That one for <laughs> safe Alexa skip was. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um gotten some I think my frames are going away. Oh no. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay. Um sweet Caroline. I read a copy pasta last time we did this, and I should probably post that somewhere. I'm gonna do that. You know that's fair. Um, the important part here is that Hydro Pump, not 100% guaranteed. Uh, also, this Jinx can freeze you if it wants. Well, uh, it looks like that Hydro Pump hit and it killed, so that's great. Um, wait clean. a second. Oh, okay, we're two seeing Naomi. Good. Yay. Oh, I just missed. Thank you. <laughs> 129 special attack. So that's mm -hmm. um, not great. It's not great. Yeah, like, looking at the notes, uh, that's a 10-16 for plus 4 L Larpus. Uh, Jin uh, Lorelei's Jinx is not good to go Scald at. You could yeah. you could do it. Um, yeah, you can't even pump Agatha. I think this is a plus 6 Lorelei situation. Mm -hmm. And now that I know about it, it's like, really, if you don't have a guaranteed range on the Lance, I feel like you probably should consider Lapras at this point, now that it's become a much more ubiquitous strat. Um, just because being able to use Ice Shard to guarantee that range makes Lance a bit safer. It's not a ton safer, to be clear. Like, the hardest part of Lance is that we have to deal with Cedra. Mm hmm for, what is it, four turns or more, because we have to set up and then heal? If you're lucky, you don't have to heal, but that's if you're lucky. I don't think, like, you'd have to get pretty lucky, I feel like, to not heal. So if you get, like, Hydro Pump, or a Hydro Pump or a Hyper Beam miss, it becomes a lot easier to not have to worry about healing. I suppose that's true, yeah. But even then, you know, that's still pretty lucky. Yeah. Um, here... Uh, we have to use a Psychic to take out the Lickitung. Um, and because, it's gone. Yeah, 132 special attack is the threshold for being able to Scald there. Meanwhile, Matt's just able to two times Thunderbolt this Hypno. What's it like? Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, poor Iron's like, I wish I had a star that was worth anything, ever. <sighs> All right. Mm. And I think Iron is just going. Mm -hmm. Going. Oh, okay. So did not get the full restore. So one of two things um, is going to happen here. We're going to see a 2C on Agatha, or we're going to see Iron try to rely on the power of love. Which, you know, I honestly don't know the odds of power of love uh, firing on a status effect. I believe it's 20% a turn. Okay. So the odds are okay. Um, yeah. That you'll get it in. I think it, when etiquette's done it, it's been three turns both times. Mm -hmm. um, which you don't. You want it to be turn two. Um, turn two is the fastest way to get through Agatha with a with a power of love. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you you start getting into problems where you'll have to like X speed on the wheezing. Uh, and if you don't live a thunderbolt, you have to actually uh, X special defend on that wheezing too. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And we're just, oh, there we go. It got through Alexa on Matt's side. And now we're going to go into Caroline while Iron starts Lorelei. I'm going to try and keep an eye on both screens at once now. Yeah. I'll watch Matt if you watch Iron. Sure. Okay. Nothing exciting. Something, something Lorelei. Something, okay. something specials. <laughs> uh, no freezes today. Got a crit on from from Dugong. Um, so Ooh. I think I think we're going on plus four here. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna go for the range. Yeah, down to thirty-four HP. Oh, that might be a heal before Bruno situation. Oof. Uh, I think it, well, I would. I think I would. Um, do you see that a second Pokemon is in the party in case of any mishaps? Mm -hmm. um, oh, is Scalding Jinx in instead? Okay, great. Um, so maybe it was plus six and I missed it. Um, it looks like, yeah, it's Rapidash that's in the back, not Lapras. Um, yep. So the Rapidash is just there as a safety for the moment. Scalding the Cloister. Oh, it kills because Cloister has really, really bad special defense. Yeah, it, as it turns out, uh, that's something I learned the last time I was in comps. <laughs> Wonderful. And clear of Lorelei as Matt pushes tw the boulder 20 times. And like, yeah, I, I think we heal before Bruno here. I understand why this puzzle was in uh, the original games. I don't understand why they kept it. It was so much faster in the original. Right? Plus, you could do swag boulders. Yeah, and you can't do swag boulders in Let's Go. Yeah, so... I mean, you are swag when you ride a Pokemon through the Elite Four and everything, but like... True. Like, you should ride the Starmie, obviously, because it's your friend. Uh, but don't do victory. it until don't do it until Agatha because then you'll have turnarounds. Fair. All right. And Iron did heal going into um, Bruno, which I think was smart. So mm -hmm. goodbye, Unix. That's the last time we're going to see one of you. Bill Gates has finally overtaken the world. Only Microsoft, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, Bruno uh, does keep the reputation for being the least threatening Elite Four member. For real, yeah. It's kind of sad when that's your claim to fame, is that uh, this is the least threatening fight in the Elite Four. Right. And you aren't even the first, uh, you know, fighter. Yeah, for real. Because I think every game that Bruno's in, he's just the easiest fight, right? As far as I know. Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, because I'm trying to think of some of the other games I've seen recently, and yeah, the Alien Four is like all, somewhat risky all the time, unless you're fighting Bruno, in which case, Fiend's not real. <laughs> Okay, so Iron is going to go through, and based on the fact that it's a Rapidash in his party and not, um, oh, maybe he's going to make a liar out of me. He is going to make a liar out of me. There comes the, the Larpus, uh, accidentally removing the Larpus for for Starmie there. Um, oops, there we go. There we go. All right, now it's time for the Larpus to shine. So we are going to not be too seeing Agatha. I wonder if that was a call made because the special attack is so low on this star that uh, Dragonite is indeed a range. Yeah. And, like, I don't hate not doing the menu until now. Uh, I don't either. Um, basically, he saved the time of depositing the, the Rapidash when we started the Elite Four and is doing the menu now instead. Yep. Um, which also, is totally fine. Forgot to summon the 2C. There it goes. Uh, Matt out here. The people's champion. Is he riding the star? Not quite. 
Okay, I'll look at it in a second. Uh, but he does have a 2C buddy prepped and ready to go. Sounds good. I wonder if it's who I think it is. Anyway, um... Yeah, right, we see a normal 2C Agatha coming through on Ironside as Matt just sets up for Lorelei. We've got Genjar on the screen. You know, right? I know some people love gender. Yeah. Happy Pride. Hell yeah. Here's the Jinx for Matt. Going for the pump and hitting it. Easy game. Yeah, why don't we just pump everything? Like, it's that uh, easy. Well, because it's dangerous is the answer. You know, fair. We're not Coliseum runners. We're not relying on an 85% power move like all of the time. I wish Coliseum was less of a horrifying speedrun. Yeah, I liked the game casually because I played it when I was like 12. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah, okay. like, I still think it's a cool game. I just, the speedrun. Speedrun is not great, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna go into Lance. Um, and the optimal way of doing the 2C Lance fight is to have this controller desummoned. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just mm -hmm. slightly more, slightly more optimal um, to have it after your major setup is finished. Um, but I think for Lapras, it's actually more effective to have it summoned at the beginning. So Sandy can correct me if I'm wrong, because Sandy made the strat. Yeah, like, I think if you already have it out from Agatha, desummoning it and resummoning it might take more time. It is what you're supposed to do when you're using the bird or fish strat. Mm -hmm. um, but at Lapras, I guess, it, it was timed to be more optimal this way, and it's probably because you don't have to summon and desummon it. Uh, Lapras is not the best bird, it's the best fish. Also, Matt at 139 special attack, so by the time we get to the Dragonite, um, we will definitely be able to hit the range, no problem. Yeah, both of our runners, you know, locking it in, wrapping it up, unless something goes horribly for iron. I think this is just kinda done. And let's be clear, it still could. Um, mm -hmm. There is still a chance that it could go horribly for either of our runners, because that's just how Let's Go works. Um, it's not good, but that's how yeah. it is. Yep. Uh, level 53 on irons, that's a 135? Yep. What's that range? Um, let me check. Of course, for Iron, it's not a range because he's going to Ice Shard using a priority move to do the chip damage that would have been needed to kill the Dragonite. Uh, what was the stat again? Apologies. 135. 135 is a 16... 13 out of 16. I can read numbers correctly. What are so you talking about? That's okay. Um, yeah. But it's it's like risking a Hydro Pump, pretty yep. much. So, at that point, you just don't do it. And I see... Oh, I see that Trubs is one seeing Agatha, and I did see the 2C buddy, and that's about what I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. If only you could ride that out of water. Right. And we've got um, 
Iron going into champion with Tusi, going for the safe strats. Um, provided everything goes well, I think this is a 306, maybe. Yeah. Did heal up Larpus before going into the fight? Uh, yeah. What do you think about that? So there's a reason you do that, and it's to ensure... I. Uh, I'm not Sandy. Sandy knows this, knows this way better than I do. Um, but there's like a, a proper Lapras sweet spot range that you want mm -hmm. in order for the Pidgeot to take care of it in the right amount of time. Um, and it looks like this, yeah, this HP is probably exactly what you're looking for. It's like not quite full um, because I don't think because Lapras is so tanky that the Pidgeot can one shot it, um, but it can get close. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of like when you take out a bug that guarantees right. it'll die to the quick attack. This is kind of like it will die to air slash. Or mm -hmm. no, it lives in air slash and then it dies to quick attack, which is what you were hoping for from Lapras. Yeah, and Dynam who, Dynam, who also helps develop the strat, is saying 115 is the perfect HP. And that's what Iron had coming into this. Um, so that was an air slash and a quick attack have taken down the Lapras. Um, nice, perfect sweet spot. Um, right there, so now um, any setup that needs to be done can be done right now because that Vile Plume only knows um, Solar Beam for its grass move, so you get an extra turn of setup there. So Iron's now at plus six and is good to just move right on through the fight, which is great. Now we just don't misclick and everything should be fine. Please Thunderbolt your Slowbros, everyone. Always Thunderbolt your Slowbros. Of course, um, being the, the Bika version, um, you, if you ether your psychics, uh, and then you're fine because it's supposed to. I believe it's supposed to exactly run out on Slowbro, so it's hard to misclick. Yes, um, because you use five on Lance, and then you use five on the uh, first five Pokemon this fight. Uh, Slowbro is the last one to show up. Very cool. Though, if you do wind up. Uh, doing two Seagas and Strats, you only have nine Psychics for this fight in Lance, so you just Thunderbolt the Pidgeot. Correct, yep. Um, depending on your special attack, but I yep. think this one's just fine for Iron. And there's the Slowbro, um, so that's mm -hmm. down. There is the Dub. That, that is, is going to be a mid-306. Yes, huge GG's to Iron. Uh, really well played. Um, you know, no nothing crazy in terms of errors, just some Joy-Con moments and stuff like that. Um, good to see Iron through. Uh, and Matt, only one fight behind, which is pretty good. Um, yep. Likely, well, right now, congrats, Iron. You're above the median. <laughs> 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 um, but... Uh We'll see if you stay that way, fingers crossed, and we'll see if the the stars fall in your favor to continue your Let's Go journey um, as we go through. And now, of course, uh, Matt Matt got the 144 special attack, so mm -hmm. don't have to worry about Dragonite at all as we get registered in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But yeah, both of our runners putting on a really good show both of our runners, you know, just putting on phenomenal performances. Uh, three, 306, 306 is nothing yeah. to sneeze at. Not at all. That's very impressive. Anything sub 310 is super impressive when it comes to Let's Go. So, uh, and in, this is a race to keep in mind. So uh, we didn't check natures. We didn't, um, we didn't worry about resetting for the perfect Pika at all. So Lots of stuff could have gone wrong, and they tend to in tournament races, but still pulling out a 306 is pretty impressive. Hey, Iron, GG's. Hello. So... How did the run go? <laughs> uh, the run was... Oh, that one was pretty good. It was my best, definitely my best run of the tournament. Um, the biggest thing was the hideout, especially J&J. &J. Yeah. That was just horrible. It cost me pretty much any chance at PB, but... Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, I was pretty much... I think exiting Blaine, I was 26 seconds behind PB, so... That's that's pretty impressive for a, a race run. Because uh, these are not easy races to do. Yeah, it went pretty good. I think um, tu uh, Tunnel was a bit weird. I got Machop and Cubone kind of late, but then the yeah. glowing Onita kind of saved those. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would have loved to have get them evolved earlier. 
So I can't really complain about that. My Route 6 is pretty good. I got like Abra, and so that was that was a nice extra bonus. Chansey at the end of Mount Moon is really good as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Probably helped a little bit on the uh, some of the fights on Mega Bridge and on Misty. I'm not sure <laughs> it would have been fine, but I think it would have been fine otherwise. Um, awesome. Yeah, and then I kind of fumbled a bit on the Lapras strats. I should have probably healed Lapras in battle on Lance to save the heal inside of battle. And then I should have healed, instead of healing before Agatha, I should have healed in battle, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're, unless you're doing them a lot, they're they're like not quite intuitive because you're used to doing 1C. So that yeah. said, though, Dynam said you had the perfect um, Lapras HP going into champ. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that worked out perfectly. I was yeah. thinking, like, I think maybe if I had a really good start, I could have not healed and then maybe just gone for plus four strats, potentially, if I had really good special attack, of course. But yeah, healing yeah. there was was definitely correct. I was, wasn't was mm -hmm. sure, and I was thinking, yeah, star kind of sucks, so I should just go for that, so. Nice, yeah. Okay, so how do you feel about 30628? Do you think that'll be above median or below? That's a good question. It, it'll be it'll be close. It really depends on what happens in the next in the rest of the races, whether people yeah. get other people die in E4 trying to YOLO or, or something like that. So um, I'm optimistic it's good enough to be better than Median, but we'll see. Yeah, I definitely would have preferred a 305. I think that would be much better. But... Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes the run just doesn't let you do that, right? Yeah. I could have I could have one seed E4 here, but I just wanted to finish. Yeah. I, I came in wanting to get my best tournament time. So, and I did and that. you did, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, can't complain about that. It looks like uh, Matt's almost through. Goodbye, Mark. Um, we just got one more Pokemon, and then we'll finish with a uh, five, three, ten from the looks of things. Maybe, maybe a three eleven. Yeah, yeah so... I know he he had a weird situation like earlier. I couldn't remember exactly what happened, but well, d weird. I mean, he he ditched Bill and got kicked by Koga. Oh, we did. Uh, was it weird yeah. about my run? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he went in and got kicked by Koga, and then got Omega Omega early teeth and Alpha Sapphire. I should have done the uh, done the early pushy push too, and yeah. uh, then I could have just done my fly menu right from the gym. Wasn't planning that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the number one thing on everyone's mind right now is my friend the Gary Airy Ariados. Yeah, you know, Magikarp is in every single Let's Go run that makes it to Mount Moon. And we never see it get to fulfill its dreams of becoming oh, yeah. a big, scary <laughs> Gyarados. And then I decided, you know what? We never get to see it become a Gyarados. Let's have it become a champion. <laughs> and there oh, it is. Oh, let's go. Right in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> GG's, that's a 31103. Don't forget to quit in race time, or dot done in race time. At... There it is. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, that was certainly a run. Um, the great memes of our time uh, were seen, and there's a great picture of my cat, in case you missed it at the beginning. <laughs> uh, so, Matt, how did you feel about that run? Did you have fun this tournament and all that jazz? Matt, you have You're to muted. unmute yourself. There we go. <laughs> there you go. I, I did have fun. Um, coming into this last round of the tournament, I, I knew there was almost zero chance that I had of actually advancing beyond. Um, you know, I, I GG's to Iron. He's he's a better runner at me than me at this point in time. Has been for a while, and and he had a hell of a run. You know, unfortunately, just that that uh, hideout killed him a little bit there. It happens. But yeah. uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those where I knew I was not going to be advancing beyond this round of the tournament unless I got supremely lucky lucky and played lights out. So why not have some fun with it? Make some memes, you know, have the have the chat hopefully enjoy some of the some of the shenanigans that I brought along with the uh Magikarp and kick my Koga and whatnot. So Yeah, congrats on getting kicked by Koga, first one in the tournament. 
Uh, oh, and I think it was the first one from last year's tournament too. Uh, Poke guy or... got kicked by Koga last year. Oh, that's right. I forgot Poke guy got kicked by Koga. Yeah, and uh, congrats to Iron with the fastest ditch build time so far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you beat me by one, like thirty seconds. Like Twenty seconds. Fun, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very very fun, full of meme run. Uh, you love to see a nice ditch bill happen at at the same time as a good turning time. So <laughs> that's pretty good. Matt, what did you get to get into Koga's gym then? What was that? You were short for Koga, obviously, because you were oh, picked. Oh, Matt, uh, Matt I was went at 40 in, pokes. Matt went oh, in at C skim. Oh, he went oh, in. Yeah, I went in on my C okay. skim split. And then he grabbed the teeth and then went up and did the C skim cutscene. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. this is definitely one you're going to want to watch back just to see. All the ups and downs, twists and turns. Yeah, and you get to hear Leggy and I talk about our favorite gym puzzles. Uh, mm -hmm. that, so that too. You, you can listen to <laughs> all of that back that we did to fill time for the Erica's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your guys' final thoughts for the for this run for this race? Uh, it was a great tournament. Um, congrats, GG Matt. That was a Great run. Congrats on all the memes. Uh, glad I could do a few of my own. Um, but I was kind of taking this a bit seriously. But No, you no. I, 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 I was fully expecting you to take this seriously. I don't know if you saw it in the chat. There were a couple of times I was like, you know, just go full send one CE4, you know, go for that that median score just because I knew I wasn't going to I wasn't going to hit. I don't think I've hit below a 308 in this uh, in this tournament. And, you know, it, at this point, I think I personally think a 305 or better is probably going to be the, uh, above the median for this particular round, just because I think a lot of people are going to be pulling out the stops. Um, and, and that's just not the level I'm at at this time. But overall, I did have fun. You know, I hope you all had, had fun with us. Uh, speaking of, you know, the median, are there any races in particular that either of you are super excited for uh, as a spectator? Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, they're all going to be really good. I think. Jeez, yeah, it's <laughs> it... obviously I, I like think... obviously the top point race is going to be really exciting. Um, I think that uh, the race with uh, Etchy and T Pat's going to be good. I think they're all going to be really good races. Even Yaxo JT and Head Bob, very three very good runners there. Um, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a really good one as well. Uh... Yeah, I I don't know if I can really pick one race that I'm more excited about watching. I think the to me at least the top three to watch is uh, Saiyan Headstrong Ergo, Amber Etiquette and Fury, and then T Pat Etchy race. Um, Pogatax is you know not somebody that's to take lightly. I definitely think he has a a chance to win that one. You know, depending on what happens with with T Pat and Etchy. Um, Really, any of these races are, are going to be worth watching, but I think those are, to me personally, those are the top three to to definitely sit down for. And speaking of the top three that are coming up next... Shoutouts to Sandy on Tech. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, 1pm Eastern, we have Crisis versus Mocha Jones. Uh, then two days after that, uh, what day of the week is that? Um, that would be a Friday. Yeah. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern is the Etchy Pokatax Teapot race. And then Saturday morning, get your cartoons and cereal ready for Saiyan Ergote and Headstrong. Fantastic. Well, I think, I think we're done then. So we can let everybody go to the bathroom and relax a little bit. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching, everyone. And uh, remember, sometimes you just want your Magikarp to evolve and fulfill its dream. Exactly. And don't eat the yellow snow. Don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>